Corvo, if only there was someone else I trusted to send, so that you could remain near. But there is no one else, and the Spymaster was right to insist that I send you. The plague has taken so many, and we must find a cure. When you are near, my heart is at peace. Emily and I will count the days until you return. Hurry home, and bring good news. Steady hand. That's it. Watch it. Cast off line. Casting off. We're away. Take us straight to Dunwall Tower. Lord Corvo has news for the Empress, and we've come a long way. A long way to bring bad news. The sailors say there's a curse on us. Black magic. Superstition. For all we know, there's a cure for the plague by now. Maybe. We live in strange times. Sending the Empress's bodyguard away for a couple of months. That's unusual. Well, this was important. We need help with the rat boy. Waiting for your news, Corvo. You know what to do next time? Yes, yes. The pressure was too low. All these new machines are touchy. You just don't do anything crazy. Sokolov's changed everything again, and we don't know what the hydraulics can do now. We've got him here today doing a portrait. If there's a time to try something, it's now. Fewer ships moving along the river now, with the plague and all. Hello, sir. Corvo, you're back! Will you tell me about your trip, please? Were there any whales? Wait! Let's play hide and seek first. I'll cover my eyes and you hide. You have time? Mother's busy talking to that nasty old spy master. Okay, here we go. Run with me! <laughs> Follow me, Corvo. See if you're so good at this. I'll hide my eyes and count, and at the end of the countdown, I'll try and find you. Okay, I'm going to count to ten. Find a place to hide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here I come. Find you. Let's see about here. Okay, you win. 
We should go now, so Mother can see you too. Uh... Later, will you give me more climbing lessons? Someday I'm going to climb up to the rooftop. Ooh. While you were gone, Mother seemed very sad. I think she missed you. Welcome home, Lord Protector. Stop moving, Campbell. And you, Corvo, welcome back. From wherever you've been. They sent him all around the Isles to beg for aid. A waste of time. My elixir will banish the plague from this city. Now keep still a moment, High Overseer Campbell. I'm not so sure that painting looks like Campbell. Did you see any monsters while traveling to the other Isles? You saw my improvements to the Waterlock. I leave the worst parts of him in shadow, but still... Hmm. In this painting, I insult my own genius. See what I'm forced to paint? The High Overseer is no beauty. I do my duty for the realm, but not gladly. I'm sure the Empress is eager to see you. Eh, Corvo? I must preserve our High Overseer for future generations of the faithful to marvel at. What are you doing? I need the bottle to draw the eye away from Campbell. I suppose I can paint him without the cider, though in truth he's always close to the stuff. It was a fool's errand, Corvo. The plague comes from inside us. We must all strengthen our faith. I Overseer, I must ask you to hold your pose. No foreigner can save us from the consequences of our corrupt society. No fancy elixirs, either. Remember, to every man his choice, to every man his fate. Say what you will, this plague has brought the faithful to our doors. Should we can? She'll see you at once. It's been good traveling with you, Corvo. They're sick people. Not criminals. We've gone beyond that question, Your Majesty. They're... They're my citizens. And we will save them from the plague if we can. All of them. Very well. We will not speak of this again. Mother, Corvo is back. Thank you, Emily. Leave us, please. As you wish, Your Majesty. Corvo. Two days early, full of surprises, as usual. It's a fair wind that brings you home to me. What news Follow have you me, brought? Captain. I hope that one of the other cities had dealt with this before, knew of some cure. This news is very bad. We're at the breaking point. Cowards. They're going to blockade us. They'll wait to see if the plague turns the city into a graveyard. Are you okay, Mother? You seem sad. Yes, don't worry, darling. Mother is fine. Wait, where are the guards? Who sent them away? Mother, look! What are they doing on the rooftop? What? Emily, come here! <laughs> Emily, get behind me! Look out! <laughs> Corvo, thank you. If you hadn't been here... No more! Not again! Mommy! No! Get away from her! Corvo! <laughs> Corvo, it's all coming apart. Find, find Emily. Protect her. You're the only one. You'll know what to do, won't you? Corvo.
He warned us all. Look at what he's done. Yes, he's killed the Empress. What did you do with young Lady Emily, traitor? Her own bodyguard. Ironic. I'll see you beheaded for this, Corvo. Peg him. Sign the confession, and let me give you the rights to put your spirit at ease. That's enough for now. Get out. Let's give the man some time to think. Corvo, the Empress is dead. Her daughter Emily is hidden away, and no one will ever know the truth. Yes, unlucky you. Tomorrow you'll be executed, but it's for a good cause. This country needs strong leadership now, someone to guide the weak. And that's where we come in. There was nothing personal in this, even though you almost sank our plans. But it turned out well. You were in the wrong place at the right time. And someone has to take the fall. Goodbye. Corvo. Guards! Take him back to his cell. You should eat, Corvo. This meal comes from a friend. Share your food with me tonight? I don't need shit from you. How come so many people are coming to the execution tomorrow? It's on account of Corvo, the one who killed the Empress and abducted her daughter, Emily. Nice work. Occasion. Get a few more right. before they get Social you. Social event for the High and Mighty. Come see the noble Lord Protector get his head chopped off. They're as bad as us betting on the dogfights. Attention, the solitary wing is off limits to maintenance crews, unless accompanied by an officer of the walk. Escort to the solitary wing must be scheduled in advance with one week's notice. I had to crack skulls, lazy bastards. If they don't want to work, they don't get their ration of elixir. It's that simple. The military or the plague? Life is hard. Attention. Tomorrow's execution will be restricted to the personnel assigned to the event and approved dignitaries only. Sign the confession for her murder 
isn't critical, but it might be useful to us later. The assassination of an empress is not a trivial matter. I was gonna report that boiler leak from yesterday. Forget it. Just do your rounds. The report's trouble for both of us. I'm moving. Nasty for itself! Execution is tomorrow, right? Yeah, but everything has to be set up today. I can't wait to see his hand. Not everyone did. The solitary I really like is off limits to maintenance crews unless accompanied by an officer of the watch. Escort through the solitary wing must be scheduled in advance with one week's notice. I guess if you'll kill the Empress, you don't care about a few guards. Shut up! Look at this stuff. Somebody's been down here. Bottle Street gang, maybe. Watch for booby traps. Could be some down here by the look of it. Good. If we're lucky, one of them will get Corvo. You're afraid of him? He's Sir Conan. 
It's all merchants and whores down there. Kids like you, you never saw what he was like. I saw him fight three to one in the practice yard. In a whirlwind. I hope it's me that finds him. I hope it is too. Either way, let's just dump them down there like a rat. Attention, Dunwall citizens. The assassin Corvo, responsible for the murder of our fair empress and the disappearance of Lady Emily, heir to the throne has temporarily escaped state custody. Several brave officers of the state are dead by his hand. He is to be captured or killed at any cost. Don't get past me, sir. Do you know who we're hunting here? Don't try to take him out alone. But what if no one from the squad is around? Then try to make a lot of noise when you die. Knock something over if you can. Bastard. Ah!
Assassin Corvo, responsible for the murder of our fair Empress and the disappearance of Lady Emily, heir to the throne, has temporarily escaped state custody. Several brave officers of the state are dead by his hand. Corvo, over here. Quickly, I'm a friend. I'm Samuel, and I work for some good people who want very much to meet you. Well, they said you'd come out here, but I could still hardly believe it. I'll take you to meet them, just down the river from here. This is the Hound Pits pub, closed for business. Half the district marked off is dead for the plague. We're right under the Lord Regent's nose, and he don't know a thing. Of course, if anyone finds out what we're up to, the watch will break in with swords drawn. And now that you've escaped, the Lord Regent's going to be tearing the city apart. Take you up to meet Admiral Havelock and the rest of the loyalists. The Admiral's a man to be reckoned with. If anyone can help you find that missing girl, Lady Emily, and clear your name, he can. Welcome to the Hound Pit Pub, sir. How may I help? Hello, sir. I am Wallace, and this is Cecilia. We have been informed of your arrival and will do our best to stay out of your way while you conduct your business. Yes. Lydia's a servant here as well. I expect they're hard at work in there. Best join them. They'll help you get whoever really killed the Empress. I'm sure the Admiral was anxious to meet you. It wasn't easy getting you here. So it's starting at last, Admiral. We found our man. Even after six months in Cold Ridge Prison, he slipped out like it was nothing. Yes. Not surprising. He was the personal bodyguard of the Empress. You've heard the stories. Yes, I have. It still amazes me that someone could get to the Empress and young Lady Emily. No one knows the real story, Trevor. We all have our suspicions. We'll know the truth in time. He's strong and quick. But I hope he understands subtlety as well. This isn't one of your fancy dress parties. The reality is that we need men killed. Have you ever killed a man? Only with my wit. But it's a fair point, as always. He'll be here soon, and I'm looking forward to meeting him. We can continue this later, Lord Pendleton. The man of the hour is here. Corvo, I'm Admiral Havelock, a true servant of the Empire, like you, until the Lord Regent purged those of us who wouldn't recognize his claim on the throne. And I'm Lord Trevor Pendleton. I represent the nobility in our little group, but we all act as equals here at the Hound Pits pub. This is a momentous occasion, Corvo. I'm going to come out with him. We've been building a coalition of loyalists, aimed at ending the Lord Regent's tyranny and restoring the throne. At risk of execution, we're committed to finding young Lady Emily and seeing her crowned as Empress. We've got big plans, but we can't do any of it without you. We need your skills, your ability in a fight, and in helping us, we're going to help you destroy the men who murdered the Empress. Sorry, you must be exhausted. We can discuss this further after you've recovered, but before you retire, you should introduce yourself to Piero. He's challenging at times. But his industrious mind buys him that right. Yes. Piero's as much an artist as a technician. 
He's going to be crafting the gear you'll need. Go talk to him, and then get some sleep. We can talk more when you've rested. Good to have you with us, Corvo. Nothing against the others, but there's no substitute for a man who's done his service for the Crown. Have you talked to Piero yet? He made the weapons we left for you on your way out of Coleridge Prison. Go see him when you can. You don't know what it means to work with a man who stood at the Empress's right hand. We can't bring her back, but at least we have the man she trusted most. And maybe we can help you right some of the wrongs done to you. This bar is mine, but please, treat it as your home. Piero still wants a word with you. He's, well, he's not a diplomat, but he's a brilliant man. Samuel is a blessing. Without him, we couldn't navigate the waters of the river at night. We keep our lights low to avoid prying eyes. What I wouldn't give to be back at sea. I told them I'd be damned if I sail under a usurper's flag. You should have seen their faces. Curse the Lord Regent. I might have taken to piracy after the Navy, but then inspiration struck me, and I started assembling our little group here. The Empire was built on its Navy. Never forget that. I served proudly until the bureaucrats took over. Pendleton's a good man. Used to be close to that snake, the Lord Regent himself. Don't be fooled by the fact that Pendleton's a noble, though. Not all of them are terrible. I bought this bar years ago. There were some happy times here before the plague hit the city. Before the Empress was killed and everything went to shit. We'll make it right again, together. attempt to house or care for a friend or family member who shows signs of blood on their face and chest area. The only way to help them is to bring them to the city watch. They will be taken to the flooded district for treatment. I'll be crafting your weapons and gear. All custom work. For you, I will create the tools of a master assassin. And now the tank of whale oil is running. Will you get a new tank from upstairs, please, while I hold this in place? Be careful. The oil's unstable. When it explodes, there is a terrible mess. Mask. 
You're a wanted man, so everyone in the city knows your face. But this mask will mean terror to them. If you just hold still, fit must be precise. There. Can you see normally? Send the lens out of alignment. There. Better now? I could create more for you. Upgrades for your gear, weapons, munitions. But our situation here is desperate. Scavenge the city for valuables, and I will resell them on the black market. That should give us the money to craft the things you need. Tell me what I can make for you. You must be exhausted. I advise that you get some sleep. Your life will get even more difficult soon. You should rest while you can. Very well. You know best. Let me know if you need anything more. I once served under Admiral Havelock, Captain Havelock then. I don't know if he remembers me, but I fear it's rude to ask. I don't want to embarrass him. I was just a common riverman, hauling parcels and such along the river. But I know how to keep my trap shut, I do. This is about as far downriver as I care to go. Toward the flooded district, the river's thick with corpses. I've seen battles in my younger years. And I see you've got the stuff. Say the word, and I'll back you. All of the little people in the city like me, we miss the Empress something terrible. And the fact that young Lady Emily is out there somewhere still lost, it's just too much for most folks to think about. Oh my, you startled me. Ah, you could only be Corvo. I suppose you're practicing for your, well, your job? You're much younger than I expected. Do make yourself at home. Terrible you got blamed for the death of the Empress, rest her spirit. I'm sorry it's so dark, we can't risk being seen. It is a bit romantic though, isn't it? I used to be the hostess here. Oh, I could tell you stories about that, believe me. You can call on Cecilia for the more menial tasks. It's what she's suited for. 
I hope the bed's to your liking. Let me know if you have trouble sleeping. Yes, very much so, but no need to fear. He is here to work with our masters. People say he killed the Empress. Of course he didn't. People are foolish and believe whatever they're told. Okay. If the Admiral trusts him, then so will I. The Admiral served in the Navy under the Empress. But something happened with the Lord Regent that drove the Admiral out. If I understand it right. Admiral Havelock made it very clear that we aren't to carry lamps outside. Maybe you haven't seen much of it, but the city has changed a great deal after the Empress died. Since the Lord Regent took over, the city watch is best avoided. Most people try not to go outside at all. We can't leave the pub. I have nowhere to go anyway. My apartment was in the flooded district. Furnishings have been installed at last with no small amount of complaining by that antiquated boatman. The others have no idea what it's like to suffer as I have. Speaking of which... Wallace! Please breathe two bottles of Dunwall Red, never mind which, and fetch a clean glass. Ah, <sighs> well... I'll begin again tomorrow. Pleased to meet you, Master Corvo. I saw you at court in... happier days. But you might not remember. I was once a close ally to the Lord Regent, Hiram Burroughs, back when he was just the spy master. He's one manipulative bastard, I can tell you that. There's something distinguished about you, Corvo. Was there nobility back in your family line? I wouldn't be surprised. Did you know I'm distant kin to the late Empress in her line? Not close enough, sadly. I'll never be Emperor. Most of the nobility went straight over to the Lord Regent's side after the Empress died. Easiest thing to do. But to me, a noble birth requires a sense of... loyalty. This city has fallen into ruin since the plague struck. These poor weepers moaning and bleeding from the eyes. They say there's no cure for the plague once it advances that far. Hmm. Terrible.
Your life has taken a turn, has it not? The Empress is dead, her precious daughter Emily is lost somewhere in the city, and you will play a pivotal role in the days to come. For this I have chosen you, and drawn you into the void. I am the Outsider, and this is my mark. There are forces in the world and beyond the world, great forces that we call magic, and now these forces will serve your will. Use this newfound power, my gift to you. Come find me. that follow, your trials will be great, Corvo. Seek the ancient runes bearing my mark in the lonely places of your world, and at shrines raised in my name. These runes will grant you powers beyond those of other men. To help you find these runes, I give you this, the heart of a living thing, molded by my hands. With this heart, you will hear many secrets, and it will guide you toward my runes, no matter how they may be hidden. Listen to the heart now, and find another rune. This place is the end of all things, and the beginning. All of time is meaningless here, neither seconds nor centuries. Someday this place will devour all the lights in the sky. The one who walks here is all things. Cradle songs of comfort and bones gnawed by teeth. This is the place from which those who dabble in black arts draw their power. And this place is their doom. What I have given you falls upon you, as it has to the others before you. And now I return you to your world, but know that I will be watching with great interest.
landing in the distillery district. Dude. Should I clear space for Samuel then? If you like, but he won't use it. Why? He can't sleep in regular beds anymore, or that's what he says. Says he was in the Navy too long. Can you believe it? Oh. That pile of wood out there? It's a hobble he built from an old rowboat. Where does Admiral Havelock find these people, I wonder? I had a sailor for a boyfriend once. He thought he'd strike gold digging in the Pandisian cliffs. They found his ship drifting empty. Good day, Master Corvo. Are you a nobleman, Corvo? No one seems to know much about you. By your bearing, I'd say so. Lord Pendleton's great-grandfather took a Sokonan chambermaid to wife. On second thought, the story doesn't bear repeating. Even the finest blood can go bad here and there. Lord Pendleton Memoirs, Chapter 27. In my thirteenth year, the despised stepmother at last departed, and Pendleton Hall was again quiet. Although father had by then sunk into deep depression, it was at this sensitive time that Waverly Boyle first entered my life. She who will be the source of many tender recollections to come. Corvo seems to have arrived in good shape. Much better than I expected given what I've seen of Coldridge Prison. He seems willing to work with us, and he shouldn't lack for motivation. The man has lost everything. We'll judge how he performs in the field. And if I can, I'll find a way to test him personally. Well, let's get down to it. First off, I know that assassination is dark business, but sometimes good men have to do bad things to make the world right. Our purpose is clear. We want to restore Her Majesty's line by finding and putting Emily Caldwin on the throne. To those ends, we'll hide, act in shadow, take them apart, piece by piece. Tonight, High Overseer Campbell dies by your hand. It won't be easy. He's protected by his overseers, an army of religious zealots. But if anyone can do it, you can. Your exploits are legendary. Campbell carries a private journal. Once you've eliminated him, get the journal, because we think it contains Emily's location. Recovering her is obviously critical, assuming she's alive. That's the gist of it. Remember our cause and strike true. We're counting on you. Another thing. Campbell is holding a former overseer by the name of Martin. He's one of us, and if you manage to find him, give him whatever help you can. He's a master strategist, and he got caught working for our cause. It'd be good to have him back here at the Hound Pits. Glad to see you got your rest, Corvo. You'll need it. Say, that's an interesting tattoo on your hand. Saw a lot of that in the Navy, but... Nothing quite like yours. Keep your eye out for Martin. I need him back here if we're going to pull this off. High Overseer Campbell tricked and bullied his way into power. The man is completely corrupt. The City Watch and the Overseers can't stand each other. The military doesn't mix well with a bunch of religious fanatics. You might be able to use that. Nervous? I would be. Tonight is the beginning of a new life for you. But you're killing for a just endeavor. Remember that. High Overseer Campbell is a bastard, and we've got to find Emily. The Overseers are a strange bunch, completely obsessed with the Seven Strictures and hunting down heresy. I don't know if I believe in all that witchcraft and bunk, but I saw some odd things at sea. Admiral Havelock has seen more corpses than all the rest put together. He has killed whales and men for profit and in pleasure. He has the bloodlust. He tried, he tried to seize control of the military after the Empress. After she, the Empress, was murdered. Look, Look at him. Admiral Havelock was restless on land. There was a younger brother, and an artist, sensitive, soft, taken at nine by a fever. Havelock loved him truly.
Oh, Corvo? If you've a moment. Corvo, there's something I need to say to you. Does part of the soul live in the heart? If the heart keeps beating, does that mean that the spirit is never released into oblivion? I can keep a heart beating forever with electricity, but what does that mean for any essence trapped within? It'd be easier if I created these processes in waking hours. I am uneasy pursuing avenues that emanate from my dreaming mind. What can I do for you? Each and every night, the black-eyed outsider visits upon Piero's dreams. He is Piero Joplin. Even now, he visualizes the next invention. Astonishing. I wish you could see it, too. Poor Piero. His elixirs have cured so much for so many. But they cannot cure his brain fevers. The youngest ever to pass through the Academy of Natural Sciences. So the law will never forgive him that. He has spied upon Callista as she bathes. More than once. Oh, Corvo? Corvo. Hello. I'm Callista. I work here for Admiral Havelock. I'm sorry to intrude on your business, but this is important. I suspect you're going to kill the High Overseer. That wretched man. There's really no reason for you to listen to me. But my uncle, Jeff Kernow, still serves as captain in the City Watch. But he's a good man, and my only family. The chatter in servant circles is that Campbell just took delivery of an exotic poison. And I think I know why. My uncle's not corruptible like the rest of them. Campbell is going to poison my uncle. Do you think you could protect him? You used to do that, right? Before you had your current profession. Before you became an assassin. Ready to go? Just give the signal. Be to go straight up Clavering Boulevard, but now it's not so easy. Half the city's dead of the plague, the other half's fighting over what's left. The City Watch still holds the bigger streets, and they've set up those wall of light checkpoints. A man walks through one of those, and he ends up burned to a crisp. Everything not controlled by the City Watch is gang territory. And then there are the real odd birds living on the fringes, like that Granny Rags. They say she's nuts. 
know which is worse. Just take your pick. If you decide to go up clavering, don't let the guards spot you. Watch out for the Bottle Street thugs if you take to the alleys. Mean bastards. I'll be here when you come back. Good luck, Corvo. Let's go. It's nearly midnight. But easy. Keep them in the boat. Canal's got enough shit in it as it is. One, two, three, heave! Keep them coming. Hey. What is it? I think that last one was moving. What? Yeah, the little one. Not possible. I inspected them myself. Keep working. Well, he ain't moving no more. <laughs> Them than us. At least some of them had money. One, two, three, heave! I think the little birdies are sad today. <laughs> granny, 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 come out with me instead. Yes, I would indeed. 
Long ago, Granny Rags danced at a court. Men begged to marry I told you the nights go on the left. Fancy it always gone on the left. You never listen. Fresh and young. On her way to an evening of romance. Careful. She, she treads with purpose. purpose. And is not as frail as she was. Yes, I was. The children sometimes circle Granny Rags, following along and taunting. She has given I herself think the little goodies to are sad today. Dear? Is that you, my dear husband? Uh, my eyes aren't what they used to be. Have you seen my little birdies? Oh, the dear things must be starving without their granny. Here, birdies. Here. Oh, my, my, my. I think I have gentlemen callers again, but not the way I used to, not the nice ones. I hear them, and they're not very polite ones either. Granny Rags, Granny Rags, let us in. Ah, oh, well. They'll go away again if they know what's good for them. But what a bother. Here's the key to the front door, love. You'll see to those ruffians, won't you? Let us in, Granny. I bet she can't even hear us. She's blind. Not deaf. We're here to do your washing. She's not stupid either. Have it your way. We're here to take your money, Granny. We're wasting our time. How much could she have? She digs in trash for a living. Let's get a drink. I'm dry as an overseer's prick. She's been digging for 80 years. Must have found something. Hear that, Granny? Whatever you got, Slackjaw gets a cut. Nothing personal. Just Bottle Street rule. Help me with those ill-mannered boys. My brave man. Listen, Granny has a birthday present for you. I got it from the outsider, and now I'm giving it to you. Go on. It's upstairs. On the vanity. I think you'll cut a nice figure with it. Remember how we used to dance? Our parties were even grander than those at the Boyle Manor. Everyone wanted to come. I told you the knives go on the left. Be careful, Corvo. They call her Granny Rags. You wouldn't recognize her real name, or even the name of her family. But an emperor begged for her hand once, and rich young men fought each other for her favor. I watched her consider them all, measure their worth, and find them wanting. Then, she made a different choice. You're on your way to face the High Overseer, the leader of a great cult dedicated to loathing me. What will you do, I wonder? Granny, 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 come out with me instead. Granny, 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 you can't I hope you like the little gift I got for you. It's the least I could do for turning those louts away. I can't bear these Bottle Street children. Ruffians, every last one of them. Rotten apples. And that slack jaw is the worst of the lot. You know what I just thought of? You could do something else for me. Another little favor. And I'd give you another present. 
Another lovely rune carved from the bones of a dead whale. Do you remember my doctor, dear? Dr. Galvani? Now there was a clever man. He's got all sorts of nasty rat guts and disease in his laboratory. Wouldn't it be a shame if some of that mess found its way into the Bottle Street Gang's elixir still? That'd teach him. See to it, dear. I'll find you another present just like the first. Galvani lives on Clavering Boulevard, or at least he used to. Those were the days. Now run off. My baby birdies are hungry. So precious. Hmm. They're shy. You'll have to go or they won't come. That's not what we heard. It was just a cold. Are you sure? Because you know we have to check you over. And there's an inspection fee. To the void with Bottle Street and to the void with you. Let me out. Oh, you don't want to talk to us like that. Fact is, Bottle Street is here to take its cut. So reach it to your pockets and let's get this done. Yeah, and the inspection fee. We can't help it. Just the way we do things on Bottle Street. <laughs> I owe you, brother. I won't ask about the mask. I wouldn't want my face seen either, pulling a stunt like that. You know what? I'll return the favor. Come by Griff's shop. That's my business. Well, it was, at one time. But now I'm reduced to scavenging things from here and there as the city dies. If you need anything, I wouldn't mind trading for a little money. Maybe someday the plague will blow over and everything will go back to normal. But until then... It's scavenging for me. Want to look at some of the things I found? Good prices, I swear. He was, was in prison, prison for five years, years then, then changed his name to Griff. Don't worry. No Those success. Bottle Street boys had no idea what to keep the best loot. Fortune Come by when you can. Such as he. Griff offers as close to a fair deal as one can find in the eyes. Yes. Come see me anytime. But he will pretend he does not. An honest man? No. But his heart is not as black as some.
plague rat is distinct from the ordinary rat, but in what respect? Its size and the coarseness of its fur, and I believe in intelligence, although the experiments there are not complete. Coriander Zoological Survey describes only the ordinary rat, which means plague rats have only been here for five or seven years at most. This was not a gradual migration. Could they have been introduced on purpose? Perhaps by a foreign power. the door handle to Dr. Galvani's lab? Yeah, I think so. Then you have to scrub. The rats get their vital essences everywhere, the doctor said. Vital essences? Does that mean guts? I think so. So your hands need scrubbing. You're unclean. Unclean? That's nonsense. Can't we just- No, I told you. With rubbing alcohol or white vinegar. All right, all right. What is he doing there all day? Ambrose says he breeds rats that carry the plague. Your friends are ignorant. The doctor is a brilliant man. If anyone can save this city, it's him. The royal physician is going to save us. I hear his new elixir is twice as good against the plague. I don't understand how Galvani can admire Sokolov. Royal physician or not, I hear tell he's a beast. A superstitious philanderer who spends more time with prostitutes than he does in the laboratory. Is this what it's going to be like when we're married? It is, isn't it? I hope not. I'm telling you now, I don't have the endurance for it.
Just like the Phantom, with an army of shadows. Ain't just a boss, like Slackjaw. No, this is one odd bird. Consorts with crazies, does rituals and the like, bone charms and such. You sound afraid. Damn right I am. Down ain't no ordinary man. Touched by the outsider he is, given dark powers. He can slit your throat across the room. Well, that give him a leg up for sure. It's no coincidence that most men won't even whisper his name. Is it true that he lives in the flooded district? With them weepers and wild hounds? That's what they say. Perfect place for a paid killer to hide. This handsome, you don't need luck. Face like a hagfish. Pay up. Don't be sour. Say, when's Slackjaw coming down? Not till the next batch of elixir's done. He'll want to check on things. Then you better get all your shit together, huh? Everything's fine. I run the still like I run a game of Nancy. Yeah. Little bastard. to the Abbey or the Office of the High Overseer, but one of the other places, where they train the Overseers to be real religious. <coughs> Crazy. He just wants to know where his brother's gone. <laughs> Sneaks in. You know Eddie. Throw you in at it when he's sober. I remember. Brimsley job, hitting the dumbwaiter all night. Yeah, so he goes from room to room, kids sleeping, an Overseer giving a lecture to the kids. Couple guys training with those hounds. Stuff you. But it gets weird. Some kind of machinery. Then a woman laughing, just laughing and laughing. Then music. A kind of plinky plonky sound. That's what spooked him. You sure he wasn't drunk? Says he still hears it at night. He never did find his brother. Ha <laughs> ha. 
That's <laughs> okay. I got one for you. Well, give it. Okay. Here goes. The nobleman laid with the scullery maid, so loudly they made quite a riot. The nobleman's wife took the butchering knife and carved herself some peace and quiet. <laughs> oh, I get it. The wife done kind of both, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the gist. Now it's your turn. Oh, uh, let me think. Um, okay, yeah, I got one. Ready? I'm listening. There once was a sailor from Morley who fancied a woman most sorely. He gave her his cash, she gave him a rash, and that's all. There isn't no Morley. <laughs> all right, you win. You win. Well, I know a hundred of these old rhymes. My mummy used to tell them at me. Just a matter of time. Where are you? Oh, I'll find you. Wonder what got this guy. Where are you? I know you're here. Spread out. Someone's about to get shanked. I knew you wouldn't disappoint me. Now I can stroll along the waterfront in peace. And don't think I've forgotten your little gift. Go on upstairs, dear one. What's it look like? Blow off, Hayburn. Go on. Toss the damn rat already. <laughs> it never gets old. <laughs> Thank you. 
whaler's gaff hand. Fifty years old, at least. This guy fought for the Empress. Forget his old ass. I can't even remember the Empress. We tagged it plain. Under Clavering Street is ours. Come on. What's the take? Twenty. Plus two elixir. Look like twenty-five to me. Look here. It's twenty. It's five each, Countin' Boo. You want me to check your pockets? Let it go, kid. Don't call me kid. You think you can cheat me? Come on! Let's get this guy! I'm gonna dump you in the river after I cut you open! That's the end of you. The second day is when the skin really starts to come all the way off. Is that true? Or is it the itching that really gets you? Or the rats? Jasper, isn't it? It's not so bad in here. Except I miss your wife. Ha! Huh. You don't scare easy, I'll give you that. But that'll change. What a sight you are in that mask. I know who you are and what you're here to do. And I can help. Unlock me and I'll buy you a drink in a couple of days. By the void, I'll buy you a hundred drinks. I have poor circulation and I seem to have forgotten my mittens, so... I'd appreciate it if you could release me or at least go gather some firewood. You never appreciate the fine masonry of Dunwald's cobblestones until you've had your face hanging over them for days on end. Nothing would make me happier than joining you and the others, especially if they've tapped some of the finer kegs still left at the pub. The lever is just to my right here, Corvo. <sighs> Feels good to stand up straight. <sighs> Thank you, Corvo. What you're here to do tonight is of the highest importance. We've got to find Emily, so kill Campbell and make it quick. Once it's done, search his body for the journal, his notorious black book, and get out of there. Campbell is meeting with a guard named Kerr now, and word from my informant is that Campbell is going to poison him. Maybe you can use that to your advantage. All right, I won't be of any help here, so I'll make my own way back to the Hound Pits pub. If I see Samuel the Boatman, I'll tell him to pick you up in the backyard, behind the office of the High Overseer. May all the spirits guide you, and may our enemy's head hit the floor without you taking a scratch.
was just reading in the archive about the heretic's brand. It sounds painful. Have you ever seen the ritual? I've never seen the heretic's brand used. No, it's a rare occurrence. But I did spy the face of one so branded. A former member of our order, of course. Out on a retreat, we passed through a fishing town and saw him begging. What were his crimes? Who can say? The brand is reserved for an overseer. Or even the High Overseer himself, who violates our codes and must be cast out permanently. Remember the Seven Strictures, and you never need worry about such matters. I will, brother. Should we gather for whiskey and cigars tonight? Chances are very good. Gather for whiskey and cigars tonight? Never doubt. see Campbell's journal anywhere, brother. This is folly, I tell you. If he catches us in here... I've told you a hundred times. Campbell is upstairs meeting with the captain of the watch. He'll be busy for hours. Now keep looking. And I've told you a hundred times, Archer, that I am certain he keeps the Black Book on his person at all times. We went to the trouble of breaking into Campbell's sanctum for nothing. Shh, listen. What was that? You can stay and find out, but no...
Is it? Not on Bottle Street, if what I hear is true. I hear guards can't even walk there at night on account of Slack Jaw's operation. The Watch doesn't care about a few kids. Maybe the Overseer should go down there. The Abbey of the Everyman has business everywhere. to defeat the righteous. Are seven gates by which he may enter a man's heart, and seventy kinds of spirits which live on and beneath the earth. For he has lived long ages before we continue thus, long after we are dust. Overseer Sturgis, my youngest sister lives with my wife and me, but does not cook or clean. She thinks on curious subjects, machinery and numerical calculations. And only yesterday she spoke of a wish to read a book. What shall I do? This is very troubling. For such a young lady is easy prey to the outsider. If not already within his grasp, watch her carefully for signs of it. She may fall into fit, or be heard speaking to the empty air, or laugh or cry without provocation. Perhaps a disfigured man may come and inquire after her. Or you might discover small items in the house, branded as if by intense heat. Or the bones of rats may be found in her bedclothes. Be wary. Overseer Sturgis, is the outsider a winged serpent? Well, Coriander of Morley wrote that such serpents are kin to the whales and leviathans. And indeed, sailors off the shores of Pandicia tell of great winged shapes seen circling far inland, if such reports are to be believed. But the outsider is something else, not of flesh, a being that haunts creation from first to last, incorporeal but not without force and influence. And so, briefly and in conclusion, not a winged serpent. Down last night. Six hours. Search the place top to bottom, and nothing to eat but the swill we hand out free. Of course we didn't find anything. Did I ever tell you, 
One time one of the second floor shutters got stuck open, and I thought I could slip out. I couldn't find a way down, and by the time I got back it had snapped shut. I spent the rest of lockdown out on a ledge. <laughs> Maybe the outsider was watching. Martin's plot to break him out of Cold Ridge Prison. That's clear enough. But why Corvo? The one man feared throughout the Empire. He's as bloody-minded as they say. Left a trail of bodies. And the way he dodged the axe? We can't rule out black magic. He had help, yes, but how far does it go? The trail goes to Martin, but Martin knows everyone. Everywhere. <laughs> is a man, aged 30 perhaps, slender, unusual tattooing on the face and chest, probably superstitious heresy, wearing some sort of industrial mask when we brought him in, stolen out of one of the whaling factories from the look of it. You're one of Dowd's men, aren't you? Caught at last? Give us a name at least. What's wrong with his eyes? Opium? Laudanum? Are you with us? What's he doing? Some kind of fit? It... He's gone. Here it is, a pin, hidden in one of his gloves. Subject has administered some kind of poison. The effects seem to have been lethal. Bunch of children playing games, that's all it is. And your niece, Callista, isn't it? I'm very concerned about her. She'll be found. My men are searching for district by district. The poor girl. Callista's a resourceful one. Probably found a safe place to hole up in all this chaos. If my overseers hear any word, I'll come straight to you. Time for drinks! I hope you won't refuse. It'll make this business pass all the quicker. Smart. The servants must have been in here. Let me see. It seems I have the wrong one. Not that one. 
No. Ah, here we are. Now if you'll join me. Men will come get you when we're finished. Keep each other entertained in the meantime. I don't understand how this got so unpleasant. Oh, I agree, I agree. A whore dies and suddenly this. Will you have wine? It's a Tivian Red. Thank you. What a... Who's been in here? I owe you an apology, Captain. This is hardly the hospitality I planned for you. Well, time to do this the hard way. What was that, Campbell? Never mind. It's a stroke of luck for you, Captain. I'm forced to break out the real vintage. Leave the men here. Or we'll have to share with all of them. <laughs> Very well, Campbell. As long as we get this little dispute settled. This meeting is taking far too long. We should go in and tell Kernow there's important business. Get him out of Campbell's clutches. Boredom won't kill our captain. We can wait a bit longer. I've had enough waiting. I'm going in. See this painting? Believed to be early Sokolov. Something primal in there. The way the brushwork slashes across the canvas. If you say so, Campbell. I can't say I have an eye for this sort of thing. Give me a good battle scene anytime and I'm happy. Or a man hunting. If there's a pretty lady in it. You have my thanks. Though by all rights, I should probably arrest you. Hmm. You seem familiar, even with that mask on. No matter. This once I'll just go my own way, and you yours. The God, God Captain's Colonel. There, there was, was once a large family. Now it is only him and the niece, Callista. His first lover was a soldier from Tibia. He killed to keep the secret. Colonel's loyalty to the Lord Regent is feigned. It is a dangerous game he plays. He has swept up in events too large for him to comprehend. His grandfather came from Sirconus. They never let him forget it. those fools at Coldridge for letting Corvo get away. Who knows what the man could do now? High Remmel, the Lord Regent, as he asks us to call him now, seems to have faith in all the Sokolov security devices he's put up all over the city, but I'm not so sure. At least
Since the girl has been moved to a safe place, visiting her twice a week has given me ample opportunity to inspect the facilities, as they say. So there's an upside, at least. There you are, my sick boy. I'll get you a treat later tonight. Oh, you know that word, do you? My sister! She's not a witch! I know her! Out of the way! You expect preferential treatment just because you are her brother? She will burn! All witches must burn! Bertolt, don't let them take me! I swear I've done nothing wrong! Silence your lying tongue! Someone's over there. You appeared as if from nowhere. We would both be dead if not for you. We are forever in your debt. I cannot thank you enough. 
I must get my sister to safety. But first, I may know of a way to thank you. There's a safe in the bunkhouse. The combination is two, zero, three. Take what you want, and good luck. Mm-hmm. 
a little cough. I'm fine. I feel completely fine. Fine? Look at you. You have the plague. You are trying to conceal it from us, your brothers in the Order. Was that your intent? To spread the malady to us? No, friend. I, I tell you, I am well. <coughs> as fit as ever. Put down your weapons. Just think for a moment before you... He was sick. Very, very sick. That much I'm sure of. Now to find some way to dispose of the body without spreading his illness. Samuel, I'm here. From the way I hear it, Campbell lived a pretty posh life. Maybe it's not my place to say, but men of the faith shouldn't live like barons. Are you ready to go? Okay, let's go. Pendleton are in the courtyard. I expect they'll want to congratulate you. He's alive. Thank you, Corvo. Thank you. My uncle's a good man, and one day he'll prove it. Here. 
I know you did this for the right reasons, but I want you to take this as a reward. It's an old heirloom one of my aunts gave me. The Admiral was right in recruiting you. Nothing's been the same since the Lord Regent took power. But at least Campbell's gone and my uncle lived. Next time I see my uncle, I will not mention my knowledge of any of this. But he will wonder why I'm smiling. Someday he will be in a position to help you, and he will not hesitate. Just you wait and see. I feel... hope. If this is going to work, we have to take down the Lord Regent and all of his key allies. You know that. Yes. Hopefully the High Overseer is the first step along that path. And we must find a girl. Emily. Poor thing. Who knows what her mind is like being there when her mother was killed. I'd imagine the daughter of an Empress is tougher than you think. Hmm. Quite right. In any case, we won't get the Lord Regent until we weaken his base. All the pieces are in play. He controls the city watch. Through Campbell, he had the religious faction. Someone is funding the military. And he currently has a majority in Parliament. Yes, I'm aware of that. My brothers control the voting bloc for my family. I'm very much aware of that. You did it. Somehow you took down the high overseer Campbell against the odds. I knew you were our man, Corwell. With Campbell gone, we've hurt the Lord Regent immeasurably. And with Martin back, we'll have the finest strategist alive. The Lord Regent must be shitting himself in Dunwall Tower. Yes, and Campbell's journal, let's not forget. Our hope is that in these encoded pages, the location and condition of Emily Caldwin can be discovered. Our entire movement will mean nothing if we can't place the rightful heir on the throne. We must act fast. No doubt the Lord Regent is holding Emily somewhere waiting to reveal her, to step out as the hero and further cement his regency. If he doesn't bring the young lady forth soon, there will be infighting among the nobles as to who should succeed the Empress. Yes, time is against us. But now you should take a well-earned rest, Gorma. We will decipher the contents of the High Overseer's journal and share them with you later. We'll have to find Emily soon. With Campbell out of play, they're likely to move her. Whiskey everywhere in this place, but good wine is hard to come by. I could use a stiff drink. Nerves. What sort of court will we be left with when all this is over? The grand social events I remember might well never return. Some of the noble families will have to be purged, of course. I'll drink to their memory. The outsider knows they wouldn't drink to mine. I know your sort. Most of my men that'd been in Coldbridge prison. Well, they had a bit of a rough side to them. I've made my mistakes. I heard a stilt walker pass a few blocks away. They must suspect we're here. We're risking so much. I do hope it all ends well. I know you're from Circonis, south of us, but you've lived in the city for years now. Though mostly at the palace, so you probably haven't even seen some of the worst districts. You know, I always wondered if you and the Empress... Mm, no, I shouldn't ask. Sailors tell tales of monsters far out to sea. But I'll tell you, there's strange things in this river no one talks about. Lights in the water, late at night. I've seen faces, too. 
My pa always wanted me to be an overseer. If he could see us now. You did right, Corvo. Even as a faithful man, I can see that. Some nights, I'm glad I just paddle the boat. Samuel, Samuel Beechworth, Beechworth went, went to sea to, to forget a hopeless love. love. He succeeded. The boatman has a good heart and respects you. Samuel is a simple man, but he knows the river Renhaven and all its tributaries, down to the smallest inlet. He has many scars, some from the phlegm of the river crests, some from the nameless monsters of the deep ocean. Samuel was once eager to hear Havok's stories of the sea, but perhaps the Admiral is not what he expected. Inspiration is coming faster. My mind warps faster at night than it does during the day. I'm being swept away and I can no longer tell if it's genius or madness. When Corvo arrived, he brought some force from the void with him. Or perhaps I'm more brilliant than I even supposed. <laughs> My, there is something to you, isn't there? You went and spanked the High Overseer in his own house. I hope the tools I designed for you function to your satisfaction. The fact that I am standing here and talking to you affirms that this is true in several ways. Do you mean to tell me you don't know how to curtsy properly? Please, sir. I was never in service with a noble. That's not an excuse. You need to learn proper decorum. The Hound Pits has seen a few lords and ladies in its day. If they were here, I expect they didn't want to be recognized, sir. Never mind that. Lord Pendleton ought to be shown the respect he deserves. He doesn't require it, but he notices. Yes, sir. Sorry. But even so, have you forgotten we may soon be guarding a future Empress? You will be in the presence of the most important person in the entire known world, and you don't know how to curtsy. But she's just a child, and she's not even here. No one knows where she is. Well, our masters are just the people to find her, I'll have you know. Please learn your manners before then. My father served in the field under General Alfred Pendleton, where he took the wound that crippled him. I hope I will do no less if called upon. Until then, well, there is plenty of silver to polish. For my master's sake, I do hope a finer vintage becomes available. Why did they select such a drafty building as a base of operation? I had hoped the Admiral was of noble stock, but I very much fear he achieved his position through merit alone. Does no one have any silver polish? Sometimes I wonder if the plague is just going to go on and on and on and kill everyone ever and it's the end of the world. Think of that. If the city watch breaks in, I know what I'll do. I know how not to be noticed. I won't be the one to give us away. I saw the Lord Regent once. He stood on a balcony and stared. Wouldn't even wave to the people below. All I ever wanted is my own little place. Maybe if the plague kills enough folk, one day I can. Memoir, Chapter 28. Waverly, Waverly, Waverly. The very name sweeps one away. She came into our cold marble hall and brought light and warmth. She changed our lives forever. It was only later I realized she was a traitorous little weasel, like all the boils. Corvo's 
Rose proved his abilities beyond question. It's not anyone who can walk into Holger Square and put down the High Overseer. And now we're faced with the question, could he be dangerous? Events are going to move quickly now. The storm's rising. Chapter 32. As yet I have said little of my brothers Morgan and Custis. Twins they are, four years senior to me. Morgan is the larger of the two groups by a slight bit. From earliest memory they abused me in every way. I'm not the first to claim their elder siblings were cruel, but my suffering was unique. I promise you. At the tender age of five, they tied me to the crib and set inside it assorted vipers they had collected over several weeks. My howls and my breathing were muffled by a blanket, and so it was hours before the nurse found me, barely alive. I had kicked a few serpents to a pulp and others had slithered away, but not before I'd been bitten a dozen times or more on my legs, arms, and face. The wounds kept me convalescing for months, while those two got away with barely a tongue lashing. Wallace! Bring me wine. <clears throat> Tomorrow I will regale you with the special gift they gave me on my tenth birthday. Audi. You're lucky I keep you on. Lucky? This it place is every fall apart in ten minutes without me. Treasonous speech and is that so? The state in any case, you can't dismiss you. me. I went through the books this morning and found five mistakes you've made. Very well. You're lucky I found them before the Admiral did. It's a nice old pub. These beds have seen quite a bit of use, I can tell you. You'd think a Navy man wouldn't be so particular about his linens. Lady Lydia Pendleton. Ugh, no, I'd rather die of plague. It was a milkmaid who started it. She took ill one morning after her chores, but the milk had already been delivered. That was all it took for them to wall the place off. Plague spreads fast. My master had a very fitful night. No one sleeps well here. When they come to get me, they'll be surprised. I've held a sword before, believe it or not. Please pardon the untidiness of the room. I will tend to it shortly. Hello. My name is Samuel. This machine was tossed into the river by the Admiral, but I fetched it. And it appears to be working. Let's see if it is. Test. Test. There we go. Hello, Corvo. I expect Martin will be joining us shortly. I hate to start your day with such a strange matter, but the servants heard something last night, moving through the storm drains beneath the building. 
Most likely a weeper, the poor bastard. There's no hope for them once the plague gets that far along. Nothing more than a shuffling corpse full of sickness and insects, if you ask me. I'd appreciate you investigating, just to be sure it's not a nosy guardsman that's getting too close. Here's a key to the hatches. I'd send a servant down there, but they'd die of fear on the spot, I'm afraid. Maybe Piero can concoct some sort of sleep poison for your crossbow if you want to go that route. Ah, hello, Corvo. Cursed weepers, roaming all over the city. This movement will have a cost. For some of us, it will be very high. I wonder, Corvo, do you have brothers somewhere? You left your family on Circonos to come here for the Empress, didn't you? There will be lasting consequences when this is all said and done. Make no mistake about that. You went down there in the sewers? I thought I heard a weeper in there earlier. You're probably the bravest man I've ever met. Overseer Martin has arrived. He's with Admiral Havelock now. They want to talk to you. Corvo, I trust you remember Martin, an overseer before and perhaps again someday soon. I owe you thanks for my rescue. Indeed. You've given us a glimmer of hope, Corvo. Because we've gotten what we've wanted from Campbell's journal. You've done it. We know where Emily Caldwin is being held. The Golden Cat, of all places. A bathhouse for aristocrats. Little better than a cursed brothel. But there's an unfortunate twist. It appears that Pendleton's own kinsmen stand in our way. The twins, Morgan and Custis. Not only are they controlling Emily, but they have the controlling parliamentary votes we so desperately need. Yes, the Pendletons have to die. But most importantly, Emily must be brought here safely so we can protect her until the Lord Regent and his entourage have been dealt with. Pendleton's waiting for you on the dock. He's asked to brief you personally. I think it's best. Campbell's book appears to contain much more than we expected. He was blackmailing a number of highly ranked overseers. With the information in his journal, we will be able to manipulate the religious faction. The overseers will bend to our will. I know the Golden Cat, not as a patron, mind you. I designed some specialized devices for them. I kept the blueprints, if anyone is curious? Don't. I brought you tea as a courtesy to a colleague. I won't make that mistake in the future. I'm sorry. I only thought... Never mind what I thought. Thank you for the tea. I have to get back to the Admiral. He has news for me. Master Piero has a great deal to learn in some areas. I'm sure Piero will make some lady a fine husband. Some other lady. I might even fancy him, but the way he stares at me, I don't even think he's aware of it. 
He spends all his time with books and machines. I don't think he understands that I'm not one of them. Corvo, my friend. Do you need ammunition or weaponry? Would you like me to craft something for you? reverberation that confounds some of my experiments. I suspect there are some kind of empty chambers beneath this building. In a district this old, anything is possible. Corvo, a moment if I may. To think, think Lord, Lord Pendleton, Pendleton is the son of nobility. For one so steeped in courtly manners, his thoughts do linger long on revenge and murder. The younger Pendleton, jealous little Trevor, always in the shadow. He is prone to skin infections. His eyes are sensitive to the light. Pendleton's ships come back from the Pandesian continent, crowded with poor, frightened captives. Corvo. I've asked to speak to you myself. You see, I'm sending you to kill my older brothers, Morgan and Custis. They're horrible men. It's true, as you may have heard, cruel beyond words. Further, my brothers are close allies to the Lord Regent, and as long as they are in Parliament, we cannot gather the votes we'll need to stop the Lord Regent from further consolidating his power. These days, they're best known for exploiting their favor with him to cheat others out of their wealth. Let's just say that not every family evicted in quarantine for having the plague actually has the plague. I warned my brothers in every way I could. I really did. But they never did listen to me. They'll be at the Golden Cat tonight at their usual revels. They'll be protected by the city watch, so it'll be dangerous. Now go. Please do it before I change my mind. A challenge, even for someone like you. Six months ago, I was out at the estate hunting with my brothers. Custis and Morgan were always better shots, though one of them nearly killed me, all for a cruel joke. Strange. I never thought I'd be the Pendleton heir, you know. I never expected any of this. By the outsider's eyes, I'm going to drink tonight. It'll have to be now, I think. With Campbell out of play, they'll move Lady Emily soon. And in a few days, Custis and Morgan will be out at the estate hunting, and we'll never catch them. Strange. I never thought I'd be the Pendleton heir, you know. I never expected any of this. Ah. You're finally back. Excuse me, Admiral. I was delayed. Pay close attention to your duty, miss. It will never work without Emily. And when she gets here, you will be her nurse and teacher. In a way, you're more important than Corvo here. You mean you found her? We have her location. And I'm sure Corvo will whisk her back here in no time. You, Miss Kernow are tasked with tending to the most important person in the Empire. Tend to her every need. Educate her. Train her in graces. Cut her meat, if you must. Do whatever is needed. Do you understand? Yes, sir. If I were years younger, I'd be doing your job myself. Don't think I couldn't. I used to climb that rigging like a monkey. Wine's no good for a Navy man. I need a proper drink. You know, we met once, back at your old job. State dinner. You wouldn't remember. You were looking after the Empress. 
Ah, she was beautiful, wasn't she? A man sees funny things out at sea. The world's not at all like the overseers teach you. Not by a long shot. Give some thought to what you'll be doing when this foolishness is over, won't you? Anything you like. Just name it. It's taken some adjustment to lead a civilian organization such as this. In my younger years, I'd have just ordered my ships to fire on the tower, then dragged the Lord Regent to me. But a bright future does not lay in that direction. Once we've got the daughter of the Empress here, we'll be counting on you to protect her. Oh, what I'll do when I get my fleet back. I've broken a blockade or two in my time. I'll take you to the Golden Cat when you're ready. I've taken Lord Pendleton enough times, believe me. I'll get you as close as I can to the Golden Cat, Corvo. You'll have to go the rest of the way on your own. The entrance is near Holger Square. The main thing is to make sure that little girl, Emily, gets back all safe and sure. Them two Pendletons are there, so I'm guessing there'll be a lot of guards. Slackjaw might have some ideas on helping you get inside the cat, if he don't kill you. This here's his territory. He and his Bottle Street gang hole up at the old Dunwall Whiskey Factory. They sell the elixir that folks use to fight off the plague. I'll lay low, but keep an eye out for you and the little lady you bring him back. Good luck to you. I know Emily must mean a lot to you. Be careful going up the street, Corvo. A river hand I know pulled up alongside me last night and said there's one of those watchtowers on Clavering now. I guess you getting rid of Campbell shook up the Lord Regent. Remember what I told you. If you need a man what knows the ins and outs of this city, especially the gutter side parts, you should find Slackjaw. Watch yourself, though. Something you ought to know. There have been more weepers in the area lately. Some plague-sick folks must have been hiding out in one of the warehouses down off Bottle Street.
Attention, Dunwall citizen. Anyone with information pertaining to the death of High Overseer Thaddeus Campbell. Report to the city watch. What is a question? Hey, you're just the man I was looking for. Slackjaw's wanting to talk to you. That him? Yeah, he's the one. Hey, we got a message for you from Slackjaw. He wants to talk at the distillery. I think they're gonna last much longer in there. That's what they get for taking free swigs from the still. That tainted elixir is bad stuff, I guess. It's what they call irony, I think. Elixir is supposed to prevent the plague sickness, fight it off. But someone poisoned the bootleg still, and now we got the elixir that gives you the plague. I don't think that's what that word means, idiot. Well, how would I know? It's some other word then. Anyway, I almost feel sorry for the poor fools that drank that bad elixir. Slackjaw be waiting for you. Easy, easy. You just need a bit. Ain't you heard? Slackjaw keeps the good stuff for himself. Rest of us get one part elixir, three parts water down. Oh, that's just to make the swallowing go smooth. Well, I ain't taking no chances on getting the plague. Drink till you drop, that's my motto. Someone wants to get He is a villain if I judge your looks aright. A villain I might have some work for. Somebody put plague in the brew tank. Half my men are weepers. Trapped three of them in a distillery. Rest are wandering in the street. Since it's so, and I find myself short of able bodies, I may have a point of interest for you, see? Way I figure it, there ain't nobody worth killing round here except those two Pendletons over at the Golden Cat. I'm right, ain't I? 
See, slack your nose. Them boys are twins. Rich, mean, and weird. Worse than most of their ilk. They've been laying low there a while, not sure why. There's a lot of security at the Golden Cap tonight, though. Special guests and the like. But you're gonna walk in there, dress like that, and kill the Pendleton brothers? Maybe I got a better way to take care of them, too. If you're doing something for me first, understand? Someone, I don't know who, is killing my men, taking my territory, stealing my goods. Might be a fellow name of Galfani. I sent my best man to investigate, but he went missing and... Well, now I need someone to find what happened to him. Go to this Galvani's place. He lives nearby off Clavering Boulevard. You do that for me and I'll get your better way into the Golden Cat. That Galvani is a leech. A doctor they call him now. Get into his office and you can find out what happened to my man who vanished. Robin ain't never been easier since the plague, but now there ain't hardly no reason to have anything. <coughs> Nearly everybody's gone. I tell you, I ever meet that Sokolov who made all them walls of light and other such checkpoints for the boys of the city watch. Well, I'm gonna give him my boot knife. Right in the ear. Slackjaw. Whores raised him. He'll never know his father was a prince. He deals in flesh, weapons, strong drink. They've always called him Slackjaw. He knows the streets of Dunwall, especially its dark alleys, as well as anywhere. If ever in doubt, which is often, he uses the knife. He and his thugs started in Trevor's Alley. Now his influence is felt over the entire island of Bristol.
old did you say your sister was? You always amuse me. Attention Dunwall citizens, due to criminal activity near Holger Square, the area is now under lockdown. Watchtowers and support patrols have been deployed. Any suspicious person will be assumed hostile with malicious intent. Maybe you can go up later and take a look, after the mother two are gone. How much do they pay you? I ain't telling you that. Come on, a coin, two, more? What you mean? They pay you in coin? <laughs> I get mine in bottles. Paid in drink? Oh, you lucky bastard. How much do they give you? I said I ain't telling you that. I think he's dead, right? I know that. I mean, do we have suspects? Suspects? What? <laughs> suspects? We ain't gonna waste time solving who killed him. Personally, I'd buy who did it a drink. But what are you gonna put on your report? I'm gonna say we found one of Slackjaw's men inside, all dead and bloody, and that you are a stinking idiot.
Hey, 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 wait a bit. What just occurred to me? How come it's always me who pay for the whiskeys? Shush up your mouth. You know I can't work out the right number of coin. It's embarrassing. There is a strong drink made here. I tried it once. Distilled from river crusts by the taste of it. The brothels sprang up around the distilleries. They are inseparable. What's this? Information from my missing guy. Let's have a listen. Gotta keep my eyes. Blackjaw! It's me, Crowley. I'm making this in case I don't make it back. He was right. There is someone once you dead. What's the take over the distillery and the whole Bottle Street gang? And you'll never believe who it is, neither. At first I did. That's why it's taken me so long. I wanted to be sure, and what's that? Hard! No! No! Ah! So Crowley's dead. Too bad. He was one of my best men. Still, you and me had a deal, and Slackjaw never goes back on a deal. Take this key. It ain't for the golden cat, no. This key's for the captain's chair. A hotel abandoned since the plague gutted this part of town. Take the stairs to the top. You can use the roof to get into the Golden Cat Brother. See that? Slackjaw keeps a bargain. Just as good as the men who run the city. Maybe a little better. You think about that. Now maybe we can help each other out again. I could get rid of the Pendletons for you, quiet-like and without killing them. But you gotta do something for me in return. The cat's having a big reopening tonight. Lot of money clients, including an arts dealer named of Bunting. He's got particular tastes, or so I've been told by some of the ladies. Got some pretty fancy stuff locked away at his place. And the only thing preventing me from nabbing all that loot is the combination to his safe. Of course, the Pendletons have been camped out there for months too, not sure why. So that means a lot of the City Watch and other soldier types. Bring me that combination, my masked friend, and then I take care of the Pendleton brothers. Just like that. You ain't never even gonna touch them. And I promise, I won't kill them, and no one will ever see them again. Now if that ain't a deal, Slackjaw don't know what is. Attention, Dunwall citizens. This district is now under a mandatory whale oil ban. Compliance will be strictly enforced. Isn't it a wonder? It's one of Sokolov's latest inventions. They say the idea came to him in a vision. Yes, yes, but do you know how it works? I really couldn't say. But all the hairs on your body stand up when you walk through it. Keep your men from tampering.
filthy mudlark? Let a tramp like you get elixir. We've been on half rations for a week. I ain't catching the plague. Hand it over. No, please, it's for my baby. He needs it. It's us that needs it. If the City Watch gets sick, how are we gonna protect him? Protect me? You grab her, I'll get the elixir. You're gonna rot in a cell till you die, thief. No, I found it. It's for my baby. Help, someone please help me. Go ahead and yell. Ain't no one can hear you. Thank you, thank you, sir. You saved me. How can I thank you? I have nothing. Wait, take this. It's the backdoor service key to Bunting's house, the art dealer on the main street. I used to work for him, you know, before the plague. He's let all his servants go, but he's still there, probably hoping he'll be able to sell something from that safe of his. I don't know what he has left, but it's all I have to offer you. Please take it. Again? Compliance is a miserable offense. Anyone with information pertaining to the death of High Overseer Thaddeus Campbell is to... Job. Get lost. Excuse me. Just trying to make a living. What will I do now? I have to keep this position. He says to bring a bottle, I bring a bottle. He says to bring food, I bring food. He says to undress. Room? 
No, too expensive. That's... <laughs> Pendletons are here again. Rich and mostly clean. Can't ask for more than that. But they're drunks. I can't stand that. It doesn't matter, though. Morgan took the ivy room with Lulia. Custis is up in the smoking room with Violetta. Bunting's the only one left. Oh, no. Not tonight. He's crazy. And I have to use that thing on him. Ugh. Oh, he's not the worst. He's blindfolded anyway. Just shock him and leave. You don't even have to touch him. Don't worry, I won't. Now Morgan's on the first floor. I need to get the men in position. The ivory room. All I can tell you is, it's very heavily soundproofed. I'll leave the rest to your imagination. Custis is easier to manage. Some nights he just waits in the smoking room upstairs and talks. It's funny what people will pay for. I can't help it if they're out in the street. They aren't my children. He's on the first floor. The ivy room. It's where he always goes. They're twins. Is that how you tell which is which? That's how I do it. I hear the girls have another way. Ugh. I don't want to hear it. Don't 
Dunstan. The Pendletons are here. You're supposed to be on duty. Come on. You're supposed to be on guard. You'll get dismissed for sure. I can't believe this. You said you weren't even drunk. Wake up! Finally. I've been like this for 20 minutes. Your footsteps sound a little loud. Have you gained a little weight, Thunder? Now, just like last time, understand? Slowly, and only trigger the shock at my command. Get it? And the safe word tonight will be retribution, let's say. You hear that, you stop. One shock out of line, and you are out of a job. Oh, oh, oh that's good. I deserve that one. Shall I tell you why? The Pendletons are here, right? I'll start with them. I've cheated them, robbed them of thousands. Oh, you're ruthless. Don't hold back. I'll tell you everything. Pendleton's inheritance was worth hundreds of thousands at least. I told them it was junk. Oh, ah, retribution! Retribution! Oh, that was perfect. But it's all I can take for tonight. Call my servants. We're done. Done, I said. Retribution. Now let me out. What the? Who is this? What do you want? The safe. Yes, of course. The combination is 879. Take anything you find. I think I felt my heart skip. My heart won't take this. Ask me anything. I screwed the Pendletons, yes. And, and I've been to the Brimsleys. They worship the Outsider. I've seen it. I did it too. saying, Morgan. And so then, the vote is 43 to 41 against us. But the bylaws stay. The Lord Regent's provisional bylaws? That's exactly right. They state that the conservative position gets an extra three votes. But not in the month of timber. Is that true? How on earth do you know that? Did you think I was born a courtesan, Lord Pendleton? I was a clerk to Lord Estermont. Before. Whatever happened to old Estermont? The rats did. An old sewer line led under his office in Parliament, and one day it flooded, and they all came rushing out. They say the other lords barricaded him in to save themselves. The screams lasted hours. He begged and called them by name, but they let him die. How did you know how to do that? Most of the women here were farm girls whose parents sold them to the madam. I trained in the school at Samara, the finest in the world. I trained in a great many things. Morgan and Custis are gonna take hours. They always do. Tell me then, how can I satisfy you? Could you... Well, there's a part of me that's never been the same since I was in the fighting pits. There was a hound. You're not the only one this happens to.
What is that noise? Oh no. I hear he didn't say a word, but he went through the place like the outsider himself. Maybe the plague's driven him crazy. He didn't fight plague mad, he had discipline. Mark me. You get that mask off, and you'll see a weeper. Know what I think? He's one of Dowd's. That's how he fought. Like a shadow. <laughs> You've been reading too many scary novels. You think I'm scared? You're shaking like a little girl. Go jump off Caldwin's bridge. to be tonight, Lord Pendleton. Anyone you want. The High Overseer, for all I care. I've never been this drunk. Some of my friends say I look like Lady Boyle. Waverly? That lucky trollop. If I'd found those crystal deposits on my estate, I'd be throwing parties too. I'd be buying the Lord Regent's favor too, instead of begging for money from my cousins. I didn't mean to upset you, my lord. Wait. Wait. On second thought, maybe you should dress up like her. Yes, I think I should like to teach her a lesson. I would be glad to, my lord. Would you like me in white or black? Or red, perhaps? Let me think about this. Waverly did always like black. Or was that Lydia?
are you? Why are you wearing that mask? Corvo? Corvo, it's you! You're wearing a mask to sneak around, aren't you? They, they, they told me you were head chopped off and in the prison, dead, like, like mother. That seems like a long time ago. But you're not dead. Now we can leave. I have a plan. I almost got away twice. There's a special door to come and go for special people, and I'll show you. And if anyone tries to stop us, you can fight them. It's this way. She sees more than she is telling. Young Lady Emily. Poor Emily. Her childhood is lost. She has become a pawn in the games of men. She was bribed with sweet biscuits and ox milk, calm with stories of magic and seafaring. All to keep her sane in time of turmoil. She hides her fears. She seeks someone to trust. The door is locked. I'll mock it so we can get away from this place. She, she clings to her childhood things, but they bring her only brief comfort. Let's go. Let's get out of here. This place is on the river, so you must have come by boat. I'll wait for you near the boat. I remember the way. Don't worry about me. It's good to see you again, dear. But don't dally, or that young girl might fall in the river. My gentleman callers don't come around like they used to. You took care of it for me, didn't you? That's nice. Who's that? I can't see. No, don't go. Let Granny Rags tell you a story. It won't cost you anything at all. Which would you like? The history of the great city of Dunois? No, no, that's not for you, no, no. You want the tale of Empress Jessamine Caldwin. Regal, fair-minded, she brought prosperity to the city, hope to all, then violently murdered these six months ago. Nothing's been the same since her death. Poor child. Her spirit lives on. Trapped, misused, and for what purpose? But here's the worst part. It was a man she trusted over all others that did the deed. They say he's in league with the Outsider, and that he won't rest until everyone in Dunwall is dead, dead and cold. <laughs> now, Granny Rags has told you a tale, so maybe you'll tell it to someone else later. Change up the ending a bit if you want, huh?
his art. Awful lousy way to make coin. Poor bastard. Stuff can't be worth nothing, can they? Not a chance. I think I remember I haven't seen this painting at my grandmother's place. She wasn't no duchess. Yeah, probably can't even sell it for junk. Not worth the time taking it off the walls. I might go upstairs. See if the mother two found something worth the trouble. Come on, Stu. One more try. They wouldn't have such a strong door unless they kept some interesting things on its other side. I'm telling you, it won't budge. Not even a bit. And I think I bruised out my shoulder. Stop your crying and give another shove. Just imagine what could be behind it. That'll get you through the pain. If you're so sure, then you shove it. You're a tough one to figure, and it ain't just because of that mask. I thank you for the combination, but ain't no point in keeping my side of the deal. Seems everyone says at least one of them Pendletons is already dead. Guess you decided to get your hands dirty after all, eh? Dunwall citizens, due to criminal activity here. Ready to go back, Corvo? You made short work of things. Get in. did the business, did you, Corvo? I'm not one to speak against my betters, mind you, but if anybody ever deserved their fate, it was those Pendletons. What business are you talking about? Oh, I, uh... Grown-up business, girl. I mean, your ladyship. Forgive me. It's okay. I heard a lot of grown-up business at the Golden Cat. Oh. I should concentrate on piloting this boat.
Young Lady Emily, I'm Callista. I'll be caring for you and schooling you while you're with us. Pleased to meet you. As am I. Would you like to see your room in the tower? Can I see it? Yes, you may. You'll get to see it all. The entirety of the Hound Pits. Good. I think I'll like it here. I'll go with Callista, Corvo. I'll see you later. You do not fail to impress. Armed with a blade, you've changed the course of the city forever. And with the Pendleton twins gone, our own Lord Pendleton will assume their votes in Parliament. In one night, you've done more than most men do in a lifetime. I need to speak to you soon. But for now, Lord Pendleton requests your attention. Ask me for any gear you need. Corvo, the Loyalist Conspiracy thanks you for your work. I don't know if I can. My own brothers. We never believed that you killed the Empress. It made much more sense that the Royal Spy Master, now the Lord Regent, was behind it, aided by some of his key allies. We spent a lot of money and exposed ourselves to great risk in getting you out of prison. But we did it because we believe that you're the one that can make the difference. Oh. And Havelock's looking for you. All right, my friend. Martin's devised our next move. There's a footnote in Campbell's journal that tells us the Lord Regent's mistress sat for a portrait with Sokolov, the painter and royal physician. He'll be able to give us her name. Sokolov lives on Caldwin's Bridge about half the time, out over the river. The catch is that I'm afraid you've got to head out right away while Sokolov is at his apartment on the bridge. Samuel can get you close to the bridge, but you'll have to find Sokolov. Bring him back here intact, and it'll enable us to make our next move. I can't believe what you've done so far. Escaping from Coldridge, taking down the High Overseer, recovering Emily. You make this old military man proud. That's it then. Gamble's journal. It's amazing how many overseers he's been blackmailing. It really is the key to the Abbey. Quite a bloodbath at the Golden Cat. Well, at least it will strike some fear into those who oppose us. The city is better off without the men you took care of, those loudish twins. And now, Lord Pendleton can slow the Lord Regent down in Parliament. Gum up the works. Bit by bit, we're winning. Let's just hope the city lasts long enough for us to make things right again. There are few brave enough to laugh in the outsider's face. But T. Martin is one. Do not be deceived by his talk of strictures. Martin's cries were heavy in his spirit. He has been a soldier, a highway robber, and a man of faith. He wonders which is more powerful, the knife or the tongue. He always had his sights set on the Abbey's highest office. Sokolov's unpredictable. And as head of the Academy of Natural Philosophy, he's an odd bird, to be sure. You showed skill in dealing with the Pendletons. I'm impressed. When a fight starts in a brothel, well, I've seen it go poorly. You know Sokolov, don't you? They say genius and madness are so finely balanced in his personality that no one can tell the difference. Sokolov's on the bridge right now, but he's given to late night wanderings. Best to move as soon as possible. He's one of the keys to this puzzle. 
to putting things right. If we could bring him to our side, think what he and Piero could accomplish together. I hope his lordship is taking this well. Pendleton, I mean. I do worry about the poor man. I'll be giving your quarters a good scrubbing. I hope you don't mind having a lady in your room. I envy your trip to the Golden Cat. They must have gorgeous gowns. You startled me. You moved so silently, you could have been a dancer. A night at the Golden Cat, Corvo. I wonder if it's your first time. Where's Wallace? Wallace! You're promoted wherever you are. Head lackey. I suppose this means I'll have to have children, or else recognize one of my bastards. This will be a new beginning for the Pendletons. I'll make sure of that. Lord of Pendleton Manor. If Waverly could see me now. It is a difficult time for the family. Perhaps we should not speak. I must fetch the mourning garments. His lordship has never looked well in black. If only there had been another way. I have always hoped to see the Pendleton name redeemed. For the first time in years, it seems possible. Mr. Corvo. I'll be getting on with my work then. The Admiral says sound travels for miles over water. I'm afraid even to sneeze. Why doesn't anyone listen to me? I feel like a ghost. I've been practicing my curtsy, but it's not going well. I don't mind helping Wallace. He gives me the dirty work, but that's what I do. I'm accepting of that. Someone has to do it, right? I don't want to look around right now. Of course. We can give you the tour later, when you've rested. I was wondering... Do you think my mother is really dead? I saw her get stabbed, but maybe she was still alive and got better. Is that possible? I'm sorry, Emily. But no. She did not survive. Oh. Did you go to her funeral? Was it fancy and beautiful? A train of carriages rode through the city. It was very beautiful. Flowers everywhere. And thousands of people wept because they will miss her. I wish I could have seen it. I'm sorry, dear. I mean, this place isn't as pretty as the Golden Cat, but I like it better anyway. You can see the tower across the river from here. That's where my mother died. Sometimes I wonder about the man who stabbed my mother. Who was he? So I get to stay in the smaller tower while I live here. That'll be good practice. I like Samuel. Perhaps we can take another boat ride soon. I've been planning for Emily. Lesson plans are together. A schedule is prepared. We will make life as normal as possible here. The horror she has seen. But all that's almost over. Now is my time to show my worth in this coalition. I knew this was why they brought me here, but I didn't want to say it out loud lest it not happen. Superstitious, I know. She, she is Callista Kerr Kerr now. She, she has learned, learned to defend herself in this treacherous city. city. She and her uncle, the last of the Kerr family. She, she dreams of freedom, and then the decks of whaling ships fast after the beasts of the sea. But alas, she is a woman. Such sadness.
I know you don't have much time, but don't forget to upgrade your gear with Piero, if you like. Off to Caldwin's Bridge, sir. We'll get our sleep later. Just climb aboard when you're ready. What do you think, Corvo? Caldwin's Bridge. You've been in the city for years, but you lived in Dunwall Tower with the late Empress, so maybe you haven't visited the bridge before tonight. Something to look out for. See all them lights on the water? That's right. We'll be spotted for sure. You're gonna have to shut off their power before I can pick you up. Now, about bringing Sokolov back alive, he's smart. Maybe even smarter than Piero. Got the whole of Dunwall under his thumb with all that natural philosophy business. New technology, potions and the like. Seems dangerous to me. But what do I know? Here we are. I'll meet you at the arches under Sokolov's place when you're ready, Corvo. Assuming, of course, you've taken care of those floodlights. Turn off those floodlights, then grab Mr. Sokolov and whatever else you need. At the arches under Sokolov's apartments, Corvo. That's where I'll be. Say something? Remind him about curfew? No. You don't remind him. You chase him down, and you give him a severely deadly beating as what? Well. Okay, yeah, I got it. Citizens and visitors to our city. By order of the region, the curfew is now active. No foot traffic is allowed across Caldwell Bridge until curfew is lifted. Attention all citizens. No pedestrian movement is allowed along Caldwell's Bridge during this period. Curfew will end tomorrow morning at sunrise.
taking this blasted curfew. How is anyone supposed to make it? Well now, Mr. Pratchett. Even a wealth... Watch. Gangs are cutting throats and smashing windows left and right. And the weepers... Excuse me, the plague victims are worse. Are you saying the Lord Regent is wrong for imposing curfew? It won't do you any good to bait me, officer. But don't worry. I'll be fine. I'll profit. A smart man can come out ahead, even in the time of plague. Sure. Like that Sokolov. He's doing fine. Always a lot of exotic items coming and going from his place. Keeps this place running. At least for now. Yes, yes. If by exotic you mean foul-smelling as a witch's bottom. The royal physician will be fine, too, until he crosses the wrong man. Rivers change course over many lifetimes, and eventually all bridges tumble down. A thousand years ago, there was another city on this spot. The people carved the bones of whales into runes and inscribed them with my mark. Children still find them washed up in the river mud. Anton Sokolov has made a great study of my runes, but he's not special like you are. He wasn't chosen, and he doesn't wear my mark so he can't unlock their secrets. Sokolov believes there are specific words and acts that can compel me to appear before him. He searches old temples in Pendicia and ruined sub-basements in the flooded district. He performs disgusting rituals beneath the old abbey. But if he really wants to meet me, he could start by being a bit more interesting.
officer before coming on duty? Yeah, he came through earlier. Made us all touch the charger, then left for the legal district. Okay, good. We can't lose any more men to the ARC pylons. Touch the charger before your shift when the duty officer brings it by, and the ARC pylon will fry you. Those things? You give me the willies, sir. You'll be thankful when Slackjaw's boys come down the street to slit your ricker. It'll be fun to watch them turn to ash. There was a time when we didn't need these things to keep a gang of kids down. I think since the plague hit, none of them expects to live past 20. So why be scared of anything? The reason you scout is so you don't end up in a cell. What Alec did was the exact opposite of scouting. We saw the Ark Pylons. They're still there. Great. Yes, the pylons are still there. In case we want to go and get ourselves killed. Look, are we gonna bust Alec out or not? Eventually, sure. He's the only one who could tell us about the pearls. We'll let him rot in a cell a while longer. He'll be more careful next time. Some low life breaking curfew. Let's show them who owns a bridge. You're gonna bleed. Feed him to the house. How it is I lost when I had a flippin' loyal Dunwall. Okay, one last time. Then we gotta keep an eye on things. Jeez. Ready? Now, you got your basic pair and two pair. Next comes the tall towers. And then, Captain's Quarters. Got it so far? I'm not an idiot. What's next? Then you got your Dunwall. And above that, the Royal Dunwall. Which is what you had. A very, very good hand. Only one thing can beat it. Very rare. Which is what I had. And that's the, uh... Come on, say it. Say it. I want you to say it with me. Or you'll never learn. The Lord Regent's Purse.
Well, there's nothing to do. And I like climbing the pillars. Just leave the oil tanks be, or they'll break. Why they always gotta put me with you, I just don't know. No criminal. I just collect river cross pearls. They chased me down, and I had to hide my catch. You help me, and I'll show you where the pearls are. Split them with you. Wait, don't be a fool. We can split the pearls. Whatever you want. They'll kill me. They'll dump me in the water. You need the key to get me out. Yeah, yeah, just look around. It's gotta be here somewhere. Just follow me. I'll show you the place. No one saw me drop it. You won't be sorry. We can split them right down the middle. Now I'm out of that cell, I'm feeling myself again. That spit of their stings like fire. Get rid of that thing, or I won't go further. be on one of those guards. It's up to you. You still want them pearls, I mean. His father was one of the first to die of the plague. A street thug, a knife for hire. This one cooks rats over a trash fire when he can't find anyone to draw. He murdered his coin.
love watching them turn and turn. What, them wheels? Yes, around and around, like the cycle of life. Such a wondrous symbol of the progress we've made in industry and invention. If you say so, sir. And remember, guardsmen, we must make sure they keep turning. It would look very bad on your record. Very bad indeed, should the factory shut down in the launch. Yes, sir. Big Hugin. <laughs> Thank you for helping me. I thought it was safe, but there were rats. So many rats, completely infested. I know some folks aren't superstitious, but I swear, the rats showed up after a man came through, waving around an amulet of some kind. It looked like it was made of bone. But he's dead now, like the others who were living here.
You haven't been thinking again, have you? Uh, no, 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 sir. Not, not thinking. I was just wondering, if Sokolov is testing elixirs on people to cure the plague, why is it he always asks for healthy citizens? I mean, if you follow my meaning, sir. You have no mind for natural philosophy. Obviously, it's because the ones already sick with plague don't live long enough to provide Sokolov with any useful information. It's just a shame is all. Like that woman the other day. She was easy to look at. Seemed nice enough. Shame she has to die, I mean, and so horrible like too. Now you listen to me. It's none of our concern the how or why of things. And if you want your elixir rations, then I suggest you stop your wondering. These are pigs. Pigs for Sokolov's experiments. And pigs mean nothing to me. Understand? Right, right. I mean, why worry about a couple of disgusting smelly pigs, you know? All pigs get slaughtered sooner or later. Better if I wonder about those sounds we heard from the warehouse, right? I mean, <laughs> what was that all about? That's better. You'll go far, Grayson. that? Did you hear what those guards were saying? Keep your voice down. I heard. <coughs> but what am I supposed to do about it? Don't you get it? We're gonna die. That madman Sokolov is going to do something terrible to us. We have to get out. Shh! They'll hear you! If you have a plan, then I'm happy to hear it. But otherwise, you're just drawing attention to us. to know what's going on up there. I was just asking if you heard the screams, too. Of course I've heard them. I would be more worried if there were no screams. What's that? A riddle? A word game? Okay, so why would no screams worry you more? Because it is our job to look after Sokolov and make absolutely sure he continues his work. The screams are evidence his work continues. Thus, the screams are evidence that I have done my job. We. The screams are evidence we have done our job. You know, Guardsman, I don't care for you very much. Tell me again what you'll do if Slackjaw and his Bottle Street boys jump you. You always amuse me. for me, but listen. Nearby, there's a partially collapsed building. Up on what used to be the third floor, you'll see a painting. I used to work there. Behind the painting, there's a safe, and the code is 294. 
I hope the knight treats you well, Corvo. I'll be here when you have what you came for. I had a dream last night. I don't know what provoked it, but I was sitting in my boat out on the river just at dawn. And the Lord Regent was in the boat with me, just staring at me. Neither of us spoke. I hadn't the foggiest idea about what to say. He just stared. Woke up chilled to the bone. When the plague passes, my hope is that the overseers start up regular services again. I'd like that. Always makes me feel at ease. I had a dream. My brother took to a country girl once who practiced that stuff the overseers are always going on about. She sold charms and the like. My brother talked about her all the time. Then one day, she was just gone. Her house was empty, never seen or heard from again. Can't one of our own doctors make a cure? I mean, why does it have to be a filthy foreigner like Sokolov? Don't hesitate to go upstairs and ask the madman yourself. And lose my daily elixir ration? I'm not that stupid. If you say so. You two, stop chatting and wandering around. Go back to work. Whiskey and cigars tonight? Indeed, I believe so.
my hopes and energies to Formula 25, which in conjunction with a high heat therapy, which came to me vividly in a dream last night, has great potential according to the latest celestial alignment. As for Test Subject 312, after the characteristic sloughing of the skin, she should be dead by mid-morning tomorrow. Please, sir. Please let me go. Ah, awake, I see. How are you feeling? Much. Much worse. Do I have the plague? Please, sir. I don't want to die. Hush now. No one's going to die. You are much improved, number 312. The formula I administered to you is working exactly as it should. I cannot let you go yet, because I have not finished with my study. But tomorrow will make all the difference. Really? You'll release me tomorrow? I'm not gonna die. Yes. Tomorrow, I will have the guards remove you from this cell. The late morning, perhaps. But the pain! Can't you give me something for the pain? I do have many pain remedies, yes. But alas, I cannot give you any. They could interfere with my research. You should thank me. Soon we will have a cure for this terrible disease, thanks to all my hard work and dedication. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Anton Sokolov. He knew me once, and did much to set me on my path. Yes, so Sokolov's a foreigner. The looks and manner of a Tivian swineherd. But he is also a great genius. Not all his knowledge was gleaned from academy books. Some is gained from the maid servants he beds. What the aristocracy will pay for a portrait painted by Anton Sokolov. If only they knew how much he detests them. The city owes much to this great mind. Let him drink, and find company where he can. What? How did you get past all the guards? Your tattoo is quite unusual. It is reminiscent of markings I've studied on cave walls far from the city. Who sent you? Piero? That jealous fool. There's no need to be his lap hound. You and I can come to an agreement. One that I'm sure will please you more than anything Piero dreamed up. I can't say I'm surprised. I knew someone would come, eventually. But you're not what I expected. There's no need for violence. We can be great friends, you and I. Will you join me and drink? Sit and talk a while. Come, we'll discuss your future. Money, women, whatever you want. There is much to learn from the stars, but those fluent in their tongue. I could consult my astronomical charts. Is there no reasoning with you? Who are you? What is it you want? Money? Elixir against the plague? I don't know how you got past all the defenses, but I think I can assume if you wanted me dead, well, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Everything within my power to give you is yours. If you'll just let me go. I can see you are an intelligent man. So you understand there will be repercussions if you should harm me? I am the Royal Physician, head of the Academy of Natural Philosophy. Stay back! Have you no heart? Please! an animal. Pain is horrible right now. So I'll just hide in a corner and leave when I'm feeling better. Subject 312 is declining rapidly. 
As I theorized, formulas 12 and 17, administered in combination, greatly accelerated the progression of the disease. Interestingly, the respiratory mucosa had erupted and raised pustules, grayish in color, which burst, causing hemorrhaging and pain. I now turn my hopes and energies to Formula 25, which, in conjunction with a high heat therapy, which came to me most vividly in a dream last night, has great potential, according to the latest celestial alignment. As for test subject 312, after the characteristic sloughing of the skin, she should be dead by mid-morning tomorrow. himself. He made a neat job of it. Drop him here and we'll be off. Set up a cell for soaking off in the old kennel. Shackles and everything. It'll be a shock him waking up in the straw and old dog poop. But from what I hear, he's woken up worse places. Guess we all have at that. I doubt a dozen soldiers could have done it better. Sokolov's knowledge will enable us to strike at the Lord Regent directly, and ultimately help you get your life back. Soon, we won't have to hide in the shadows. The Royal Physician is brilliant, but he was a fool to protect the Lord Regent. Sokolov gave us the elixir, the war machine. He could have made us a great nation. Now he pays the price for siding with a tyrant. You have my thanks, sir. If you wish to get some sleep, now is a good time. I 
hope they don't have to hurt him. He's done some good in his time. Made that elixir against the plague, he did. Clever man, Sokolov. Look what it led him to. Attention, citizens. This evening, the streets adjacent to Pendleton Manor will be closed for a private ceremony. I'm working on a new arc pylon. It will perform absolutely stunning acts of destruction, I expect. Normally, I'm a natural philosopher, but today, consider me a humble craftsman here to serve. Logic is flawed, anyone can see that. And not an original idea to be heard. His notes are a mess if he even keeps them. How he got this far is anyone's guess. He says what they want to hear. Friend of the rich, that's his method. Sokolov's true genius is pampering the aristocracy. Fools. Corvo, can I tell you something? I have a secret retreat nearby that may come in handy if the city watch ever kicks in the doors. It's an abandoned apartment across the street from the bar. I don't think anyone else here knows about it, but I'm guessing I can trust you. The key is stashed under my bunk upstairs. If there's ever trouble, you can go there for safety. I know I will. Yes, Mr. Corvo. I'll make sure your quarters are clean, sir. So much dust. It must blow down from the upper city. They let that Emily run wild. It's not how I do it, if you don't mind my saying. Restless hands do no good, they say. Lord Pendleton has departed for the evening to attend to matters at the manor. It concerns the departure of his brothers. I'm sure you understand. I want you to know I understand your actions with regards to Custis and Morgan. They were horrible men. Lord Pendleton shares little with his brothers, other than name. The stories I could tell you about what my lord's older brothers did to some of the staff, especially the maids, it's beyond my station, but I must say they were beasts, dressed as nobles. Lord Pendleton will return on the morrow. Lord Pendleton Memoirs, Chapter 41. In which I bed two of the Boyle women, and only missed the third by virtue of some inclement weather. It was the month of rain. And to counter the gloom, the Boyle ladies hosted three knights of merriment by invitation only. Lydia was most fetching in lavender pants and a tunic of yellow silk. She was pleased with me from the moment I walked in the door, with my manservant bringing not one, but two cases of effervescent wine from the south. In fact, I had come laden with gifts, such that all three Boyle women soon took notice and they set out to make me more than welcome. We uncorked the wine right away, and as night fell, we- Wallace! 
found these interruptions. Don't worry. We won't start the interrogation without you. Give me a length of rope and a bucket of seawater. That's all I need to break a man. The royal physician has a subtle mind. He may attempt to trick us. He's only a natural philosopher. How tough could he be? Good work, Corvo. Get some rest and we'll take a crack at him tomorrow. Where do I find a good meal around here? If you think prison food's bad, you should see what the Abbey serves its captives. I think the overseers make it themselves. I wonder what Piero thinks of our guest. I still wake up thinking I'm in the stocks. The nursemaid Callista is quite fetching, huh? Or maybe I've been in prison too long. I'll sleep like the dead tonight. We're getting closer to reaching our goals. But our position is becoming more dangerous. You don't house and feed a half dozen people without leaving telltale traces. Riverboats pass day and night, and the looters are going to start gathering once they're sure the plague has burned the place out. I conclude, if our enemies are not dead by the month of wind, we will be. There's a sadness in Emily, but she's strong. Weathering the death of her mother just a half a year ago better than most grown men I've known. Once we take Dunwall Tower, I'll see that her life is better. I've always thought that I'd command the Navy in her name, but sometimes I wonder if I shouldn't just take the title Lord Regent and do it properly. La di da, di da, di da, la di da, di da, la di da, di da. Di da 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 la di da da da. Oh, how do you do, sir? Oh, I apologize for my state. I could use a long soak in the bath. So relaxing. What a treat that would be, hmm? You're a bold one, Master Corvo, snatching the royal physician like that. That poor man. I hope you won't be too rough with him. Please be as quiet as you can. It took forever for Emily to fall asleep. Poor dear. It's okay, Emily, I'm here. She seems happier when you're here. Though I know you have important things to do. Out there, in the city. She still has bad dreams. Though it's understandable given all she's been through. Sometimes she calls out your name. Sometimes she cries for her mother. Little Emily. Someday soon an empress. But only an exhausted child at the moment. Poor girl. She's been through so much. I hate to say it, but we're counting on you to make things better. I'll stay right here, by her side all night. Please, please leave a candle for me. I. It gets dark in here, and I, I can't see my mother. I just want a candle. Where is Corvo? There's 
hardly a need to work on table etiquette. She knows it all, even if she chooses not to employ it. She'd rather hold her spoon by the wrong end and pretend it's a sword. Then suddenly she changes and she's all manners, asking for a tea party. I try to oblige her, but I have little to work with. No proper plates instead of a cloth napkin. I've only the bar rag. Ale mugs instead of teacups. I've asked for things befitting her, but they have their minds on other things. For now, Emily and I decided to make a pretend dinner using paper and little things she's found here and there. On the floor, I suppose. Not right for a princess, but it'll have to do. funny faces while you were sleeping. I decided to nap here in your room while Callista was taking her bath. She told me if there's ever trouble, I should always run here. Callista will come get me when she's done with her bath. Thanks, Corvo. It makes me feel better. while since I've heard from you, and with the way things are going, I can't be sure we'll see each other again. I just wanted to tell you I'm doing well, and I'm safe, for now. My job, caring for a young girl, is better than I expected, though she can be very trying. But I'm treated well. There is enough to eat. I fare better than most, I suppose. We are the last of our family, Uncle Kurnow. We just have to go on living, if we can. May we see each other soon. Your niece, Callista. Well, Mr. Sokolov has certainly recovered. A good night's sleep has left him with an appetite. The young lady Emily was trying to sneak into your quarters while you slept, sir. I don't think she meant any harm. First you joined us, then Overseer Martin, then Lady Emily, then Mr. Sokolov. More dishes and laundry for me. At least make me feel safer. At one time, we used to have colorful bedding. Someone bleached it all trying to kill plague germs. It's gotten so bad that I can barely walk anyway, even during the day. Those dogs from the City Watch are terrible. Just mean. No one here can sing. I think we could use some song here. Some music. Attention Dunwall citizens. The ascent. I know it looks... I was inventing a new kind of lock. The tumblers shaped like snowflakes. The truth is, there is no snowflake lock. I was just, you know, looking through the lock. I couldn't bear it if she knew. I know you're a man of honor, and I also know that you can kill me at any time. And for both of these reasons, I apologize and beg for your discretion. Can't you see I'm about to bathe? Corvo, under other circumstances, I assure you I might welcome your advances. But rats, plague, and tyranny have a way of killing the mood. I can't believe this. When I took this job, they told me I'd work with good men. 
Ugh, I feel dirtier than when I started. If you don't mind, obviously I'd like to be alone in here. Excuse me, a lady needs her privacy. Have you never seen a woman before? Not all of us are empresses. Attention Dunwall citizens, be aware that looting by officers of the watch. Display your pride in the... Good morning, Corvo. I believe Sokolov is awake now. The Admiral is with him now. I'm sure they are ready to start on your arrival. The High Overseer is supposed to be the most pious man in the Empire, living completely in alignment with the Seven Strictures and guiding the people in the religious faction towards spiritual health. Campbell was a farce. If not for all the blackmail material he accumulated, he'd have never been more than a lower-level initiate among overseers. The Admiral Lord Pendleton and I have already begun using some of what we've learned from Campbell's Black Book, Corvo. You've given us powerful leverage to get the overseers on our side. I can't thank you enough. I'll speak to you later. I've got to go through Campbell's journal again. It's incredible. A decade of secrets, betrayals, and observations. Now I understand how such a man rose to the top of the Abbey. Say what you will, the royal physician knows his wines. We must admire Lord Pendleton's composure in the face of his terrible loss. That mark on your hand, is it a tattoo or a brand? It's disturbing, I must say. Surely you're not superstitious. I hope Sokolov will cooperate. I'd hope to have him paint my portrait again one day. Just me this time. It's not that I object to holding him hostage for a while, since he's been aiding the Lord Regent, but it's a shame. I always found him rather charming. Anton Sokolov dined with us at the manor several years ago. He is both brilliant and disgusting. I doubt he has changed much. Bringing in Sokolov was a stroke of genius. The Lord Regent's got the support of most of the noble families. Who knows what bullying he's done to bring them all in line. We need information to break his hold. Royal Physician, I believe you and Corvo knew each other in former days. Unlike you, our friend Corvo knows what loyalty means. Bah! I am loyal to my inner spirit. You are the one consorting with the most wanted man in the Empire. It's my belief that Corvo was innocent in the death of the Empress, and the former spymaster, or the Lord Regent, as he calls himself, is a ruthless tyrant bent on destroying this city, the heart of the Empire. You are mistaken if you think there is love between me and our Lord Regent. But whatever you intend to do here, I assure you, I am beyond petty scare tactics. If I don't scare you, Sokolov, perhaps these rats will. Even if they don't carry plague. I've heard of a swarm of rats stripping a child's body to the bone in half a minute. I've heard worse. How long do you think it'll be before you talk? Before you beg to talk? Rats? Is that the company you keep now, Admiral? It's the company you keep that interests us so long. We know you painted a portrait of the Lord Regent's mistress. The very aristocrat who is funding the military with her fortune. She is the key to the Lord Regent's control over the city, and we must have her name. Sorry, Admiral. I cannot help you. It's time to put him to the question. You're part of this rabble, but I know you have your reasons. Yes, he does. All we need is the name of the Lord Regent's mistress. It's very simple. I elect not to tell you. You will have to force the words from me, and I warn you, my willpower is quite legendary. Sorry, Sokolov. No. Not right. Stop! Stop! I will tell you what you need to know! 
I'm obliged to safeguard Dunwall's greatest intellectual asset. I can only tell you so much. I was not permitted to see her face or hear her full name. She called herself Lady Boyle. You see, I painted her from behind. I assure you, she still makes a striking portrait. But I do not know which Boyle she is. I was to be introduced to her at a masked ball in her honor this very night. But I will miss that party, it seems. A masked ball at the Boyle Estate. Tonight, the timing is perfect, Corvo. But the Boyles are wealthy and ruthless, so security will be very tight. Of course. You already have a mask, don't you, Corvo? Yes. You will be able to mingle with them once you're on the grounds. You'll have to find out which of the Boyle women is connected to the Lord Regent, and take her out whatever way you can devise. We're very close now. Corvo, if you do this tonight, we'll be able to strike at the Lord Regent himself and put Emily on the throne. May the wind favor you. I swear I never saw her face. Although I can vouch that her hindquarters are the finest in the city, and perhaps the Empire itself. I assume I will remain in this kennel for the duration of your little protest movement. I don't suppose you have anything to read. Wilmot's History of the Lesser Perversions, perhaps? You're mistaken if you think I care a fig for the Lord Regent. The man's neurotic. He's the source of most of our trouble, I suspect. You're a far more interesting person than I took you for, Corvo. One day we'll have quite a conversation. I never believed you were the one to strike down the Empress, Corvo. She cared for you greatly. But I suspect you'll be the man to put the next Empress on the throne. I hear you're off to the Boyle's little bash tonight. I have just a tiny favor I'd like to ask you. Could you give this note to Lord Shaw? You'll know him. A rather brusque man wearing a wolf's mask. In fact, he may be looking for me. I knew Sokolov would see reason and tell us what we need to know. He never actually liked the Lord Regent. I'll be sorry to miss the whole affair, but you know how it is. Top secret missions and all that. It's rather important. I wouldn't trust anyone but you to deliver the message to Lord Shaw. The note is brief, but Lord Shaw will understand it. Watch yourself among the Lord Regent's noble bootlickers. I do hate to bother you with the matter of this message, but it's of importance. And you'll be able to handle it better than anyone else, I assure you. Have you ever been in a sea battle? Of course. Did you ever see pirates? And did you sink any? Of course. Dozens. Oh, yes. But that's not for young girls to hear about. But I will be Empress, won't I? And then I'll have to sink lots of enemy ships myself. And that's what Empresses do mostly, isn't it? Of course. I knew it! I read that some pirate ships have witches aboard that can cause storms and make whales do what they want. Is that true? Yes. Uh, mostly. Maybe we should be quiet now. Very well. I understand your decision to tell Callista. Far be it from me to criticize a man of your well-known capacities. What will I say when Sokolov has passed at his funeral? Something like this, perhaps. Sokolov is dead. Gone forever. 
We were rivals at the Academy, yes. He was jealous of my agile brain and youthful energies. But he's dead now. And what can I say about him? Sokolov, he did improve on some inventions. He did well for himself in his way. He had many admirers among the aristocracy, especially those who lack a solid background in matters of natural philosophy. He was a painter of portraits. They say his work was genius. That remains to be seen. Time will tell. Everything was so fancy at the Golden Cat, but in a different way than the palace was fancy. The old Madame Prudence said that all the ladies are princesses and the men come to admire them. My doll, Mrs. Pilsen, was there the day my mother died. We both saw it. I bet Mrs. Pilsen would have liked it there. I hope she's safe, wherever she is. If I ever see my doll again, I'm going to declare a holiday across the Empire. A masked ball. You happen to have the most clever mask of them all. Entering a hive of aristocrats, all who live to kiss the Lord Regent's backside. I'd rather swim with the hagfish. Lord Pendleton is an exception, of course. The Boyle family is notorious in high society for their decadence and cruelty. I wish you well. Getting in and out of Boyle Manor won't be trivial. You could apply force or guile. Trust your gut in knowing which is the best approach. You had the fortitude to release the rats on him. You have a strong will. Consider seeing Piero before we set sail to the Grand Ball. Maybe need some potions or arrows or whatever you use. The Boyle Costume Ball, huh? Well, that'll be fun, but not for everybody. You ready? stops for the Boyle family. I didn't think there'd be tall boys patrolling here tonight. Watch yourself, Corvo. They don't fool around. The good news is, once you get to the party, that mask of yours will let you blend right in. Enjoy your evening out with the folk of quality. Better you than me. I think that old woman they call Granny Rags used to live around here. Makes sense that a lunatic like her would be neighbors with Lady Boyle. If half the stories about the Boyle family are true, I wouldn't want to step foot onto the Boyle estate. The streets will be hostile until you get to the party itself. Now, good luck in there. Don't let them fool you. These people are rich, but they're cutthroats just the same.
Corvo? Is that what you dreamed of? All those months in Cold Ridge Prison while waiting for the Executioner? Wealth, beautiful women in the latest fashions, laughing and drinking Tibian wine? And what of the host, Lady Boyle? I can see all her tomorrows, and I know that either she dies tonight at your hand, or she'll live out her days, month after month, year after year, far away, even as her fine clothes wear into tatters and her silken hair gets dull and gray. Half the city can see the lights from the party and they dream of the delights inside. Will you tear it all to pieces? Either way, it's Lady Boyle's last party. that evening in the garden, but she lost her voice right at the start. And that's a crime? Wait for it. A couple of overseers were passing and they had one of their, you know, the music boxes. So she stopped singing as they passed and, and they thought she was a witch. You should have seen it. Ran right through the rose bushes and tackled her, dragged her back to that abbey. And they call us stupid. We had to get a notarized letter from the Regent himself to get her back, but she hasn't been the same since. I'm not surprised. I've heard stories. She won't talk about it. One of these days I'm gonna take one of those zealots apart myself. I'll be right behind you. Have you ever been inside? Never. Oh, I have. 
Last year, Waverly threw a garden party, and we slipped in after the Estermonts canceled. Well, it's an ill wind and so forth. Do you know about tonight's game? Oh, yes. They're going to wear the same costume in different colors, and we're meant to guess. Another of their eccentric fancies. I suppose we've no choice but to play. It's going to be brilliant. It's going to be inexpressibly tiresome. If you're not going to have fun, maybe you should go home. I'll struggle on once we locate the wine. Harold takes pride in being difficult. As much as you take in being easy. Shall we go in? Emma insisted we meet her out by the curb. Well, I'm going to catch plague and die waiting out here. I'm sure she'd like that. Why don't you wait here as any gentleman would, and we'll go inside and make nasty remarks about Emma's style, or lack of it. Well, we know I'm no gentleman, so you might as well make them here. You have to feel sorry for her. She's only here to ask for a handout. She must be desperate. When have the Boyles ever given anything away? Maybe she hopes she'll win the game. Life is so boring. I'd die without gossip. We'll probably die anyway, waiting for Emma. I'll drink to that. Which part? Any of it. I damn, I want some wine. Oh, there went my invitation. Matty, don't chase after that. You don't know what's in those buildings. No place is safe anymore. I don't understand what's happened to this city. You there! Stop that! Told her they were trash. Invitation, please. What you expect? Right this way, sir. Teach him to best me at cards, the half-wit. Ah, Mr. Bunting. Just had someone here pretending to be you. Welcome. Welcome, sir. Oh, and we have a game tonight. Esma, Lydia, and Waverly are wearing identical costumes in white, black, and red. You'll have to work out which of your hosts is wearing which color. Good luck. Another party game. It was fun for a season, but now? What is it tonight? Guess which is which. Their hair and makeup are identical, but one's in red, one's in black, one's in white. There's a prize at the end. The Boyle cameo. As if they don't get enough attention. Then again, the cameo is worth a lot. Doesn't Esma's bedroom have a balcony? If you could get up there, I bet you could find something. More likely I'd end up in Cold Ridge Prison. The City Watch is everywhere tonight. But at least you're thinking. There must be another way. Waverly likes to be seen in red. Which everyone knows. Too obvious. You know, I hear there are other ways into Esma's bedroom. Oh, don't flatter. Oh my, that's wicked. Who made that mask for you? It's exactly like the wanted posters. That's going to cast a pall over the whole evening. I think I'm starting to enjoy myself. Welcome to the Boyle Estate. Most of the guests are inside. Might be best if you join them. Yes. Pendleton? Hmm. What's he got to say to me? Pendleton is a gutless lying sack of shit. I hope he's paying you well for this. It's damn cold tonight. Hurry up, and let's see what you're made of. Be it noted that Lord Pendleton's representative has a pistol. You may proceed. 
A contest of honor will take place between this anonymous gentleman acting for the challenger, Lord Trevor Pendleton, and Lord Shaw, the challenged party. You will each turn and proceed to the marked positions and remain facing away from each other as I count down from three. You may then turn and fire Get at Get on with it. I'll kill this fool and we can all go back inside. Sorry, my lord. We shall proceed. Stop. Stand right there. Three. Two. One. And that's another patron dead. What do we do now? It's lucky we're in demand. I hear the Estermonts pay top coin. No use trying them tonight. Let's see if we can find a little brandy. Let the boils clean up the mess. Gather for whiskey and cigars tonight? Indeed, I believe so. Please enjoy your The yourself. party's indoors this Inside. time. Inside. <laughs> Just what are you doing? <laughs> Hello. The Boyles hope you have a wonderful time tonight. Allow me. Careful. We tried for a peek upstairs, and the man on duty is an ass. I should have taught him some manners. This party is a sham. I'm sure he's just doing his job. A party like this, anyone might have crept in. Excuse me, my cousin is a Marquis. Of course I don't mean you, but people are desperate, and the Boyles are awfully wealthy these days. Nonsense. Waverly just hires officers from the Watch to impress people. Your obsession Things with the Boyles. Things are bad. Could the city Will get it any never worse? End? Indeed, I believe so. She had her jobber pick up a boy in the street, barely 16 years old, no family left. I thought her interests were confined to her family. I think she ran out of family a while ago. What's it all about? And how do you know this? My servants heard it from hers, naturally. They were sexual rights, I can only assume. Or else, I heard she bathed in her own nephew's Ridiculous! What sort of hygiene is that? It's a ritual for the outsider. To keep them safe. Emma, you could get her sent to the Abbey. Nobody that rich gets sent anywhere they don't want. The Brimsleys made an awful lot of money this past century. Makes you wonder if those rituals work. What happened to the boy? I hear he enjoyed himself very much. For a while. You stop! Stop, stop that! Welcome to my party. I don't believe you've had the pleasure. Worse, never doubt it. Careful. The Wall of Light is a gift from the Lord Regent, designed to keep his good friends safe. I doubt you qualify. What a deliciously sinful mask. your mission tonight. We must speak. Privately. I'm a friend of Pendleton's, and I've done a few favors for your cause. I know your purpose here tonight. And, how to say this, your target is the woman I love. I swear that if you'll bring her to me unharmed, you will never hear of her again. There's a cellar directly below the kitchen. I'll wait for you there. I'm not proud of this, but surely it's better than seeing her killed. Her name is Waverly. I won't harm her, I swear. I'm a man of means. 
Just bring her to the cellar, and I will keep her safe with me. Forever. You should see this as an opportunity. To what? Learn a trade, join the City Watch. Your house built its fortune in crisis. Good evening. You can do so again. Land is worthless now. What's My buildings are full of corpses and rats. Where's the fortune there? If you want to be beaten, go right ahead. Let your family starve. Sell your wife into prostitution. I'm sure I can get you a good price. You son of a bitch. There's the old pirate spirit. Things are changing too fast to give up just yet. First that nasty mess with the Empress, now the High Overseer's gone. Parliament is shifting. The whole city's turning upside down. Oh, if we only had a good war to get into. There you are. Although at this stage, I don't know who we could beat. But don't you see, we don't need to win a war, only lose it. Everything's revalued, and we let the conquerors worry about the problems. Interesting. I'll be informing the Lord Regent of your ideas in the morning. You don't mean... Have another you drink, Byron. They don't serve cocktails in Coleridge Prison. <laughs> I was only talking, thinking aloud. As was I, Byron. Now drink up. What you mischief there, are you up to? Go ahead, take it. Everyone does. I had a servant sew me an extra pocket. Indeed. That's quite a mask. Are you on the guest list? You teach him to best me at cards, the half-wit. I trust you are on the guest list, sir. Good evening. You, a gentleman? I'll have you know I'm as gentle as I need to be in any given situation. As I think I've proven. I told you not to bring that up. There's a great deal I could offer you. Don't be silly. The rumors say the Boyles practically own your estate. What if I said I could get you out of the city? Away from all this, to Sir Konos or further. I don't believe you, but if you're telling the truth, we should talk further, but not here. Excuse me. Oh, leave him be. It's a party. This is a private conversation. It's a party. It's called mingling. Mingle all you want, then. We'll speak later. I'll find you. Good evening. You there, stop that. You're a scandal in that mask. I like a man with poor judgment. Would you get me a drink? I'd be so grateful. I'm sure in a few drinks... What most people don't remember is, the rats came a half a year before the Empress died. And the plague, too. Are you sure? That's not how I remember it. If something caused this, it's not the Empress's passing. That's what they want you to think. Watch what you're saying. I say nothing against the Lord Regent. He's the only one holding this together. He'll make us great again. Some of us will be great. The Boils, at least. Now, now. It's just luck they found crystals on their land. And that we can't make the rat lights without them. And we can't get rid of the rats. Rat lights and whale oil. That's all we live for now. The we found out what the whales could do when it made us an empire. This is the beginning of a golden age. Do you know they've dug down and found the ruins of another city under this one? I can't say they didn't know. Before the Overseers. Before anything. I bet they thought they were in a golden age, too. You need another drink, friend. What Stop mischief are you up to? So much. Now, how can I thank you? Are you playing Lady Boyle's guessing game? Well, I know for a fact that Waverly's in white tonight. Perhaps she's pretending to be a virgin. Additionally, Lydia's in black. Who brought him? By the outsider, we should have another garden party. Like last year, just before the Empress died. 
They told me not to let anyone up here. Do me a favor and head back down. See if Marcy will bring us up a few of those cakes, and a pitcher of ale. Why don't you ask her? And a fifth of whiskey. Forget it. She's not gonna risk her job for us, not in these times. I don't like this job. They put four guards up top. That's not a regular deployment. Well, three of us and Tom. Tell me about it. Four of us up here guarding an empty hallway. What's that mean to you? Relax. We're just the reserves. In case what? Lady Boyle tries to shake down one of her guests? It's something else. You can feel it at the party, though. Everyone's nervous. Something's coming. I wish it were Marcy. Just stay alert. What is it? 
Oh, really? Tell me. Well done. But you'll have to name all three of us for the cameo. What do you mean, you'll save my life? What? Why? Who sent you? Very well. I... I've no wish to die. But I won't wait long. And if you're lying, I'll see you hang. No guests past this point. The society, society done no better than to make an enemy of Waverly Boyle. A favorite game of hers is to befriend a young socialite, and then see her ruined within a year. A servant from Morley once stirred her so deeply. She never gets an all this day. Bring her to me.
I hope you enjoyed your evening, sir. But we'd best be on our way. Quickly. Pendleton said he would meet us here. I checked the wine cellar. Losing family gives a man a thirst. very well over the river. It can be heard for half a league out sometimes. Seems like every shore I pilot away from, them screams come out on the water behind me. I carry death wherever I go, it seems. I just don't like the way they look at me. I'm not a fool. I know I'd be the first to go if they got rid of people. My old mother used to work at the Boyles. The stories she'd tell. I don't think that the Boyles are at all good looking. What I wouldn't give to go to one of those parties. Must seem a little drab coming back here. I trust you enjoyed the Boyles' hospitality. Lord Pendleton is anxious to see you. I think he is taking his morning refreshment. Hello to you, Corvo. I imagine you made that masquerade a lively event. I doubt there will be another high society party that will live up to it. Do you need me to build something for you? I can make anything, practically. Copper wiring is making all the difference. Increasing the output by almost 50% yet. The whale oil still has too many impurities. I need to find a way to filter My work on the Joplin Art Pylon progresses grade. slowly. Even the Academy doesn't have anything that will refine it to the specifications I require. Something new then. Perhaps using charcoal or a multiple chamber device. I feel confident that the answer will come to me tonight as I slumber. Pendleton's here someplace. The river's the only way out of here. Things are moving pretty fast now, eh? All that with Lady Boyle just now will probably put the Lord Regent into a state. I'll be ready in case you need to leave in a hurry. I'm tired, but as long as you're up and about, I'm gonna stand at the ready, Corvo. You go update the others, sir, and I'll watch the water. Like as not, they'll come from the river if they come. I like it out here by the water's edge. The sound of the river is relaxing. A pity about the smell. 
I never did sleep right on land. The sea's in my blood. Corvo. Emily's hiding again. It started as a game, but it's turned into her way of teasing me. If you see her, will you send her back to me? It's time for her studies. from Callista. It's a game we like to play. I remember playing hide and seek with you too. I don't know why it's so much fun to hide from her. Here. This was at the edge of the river, in the mud. I put it under my pillow for good luck, but it gave me bad dreams. You can have it, as a present. I suppose I'll do my lessons now. Hiding gets boring after a while anyway. What are the principal islands in the Empire? Uh, Circanos, Gristol, Tivia, and Morley. And which one is the biggest? Gristol! And it's the best one, too. And how does whale oil work? That one's a trick. No one knows. Not even Piero. Excuse us, Corvo. I'm afraid you're a little distracting for the girl. I need to start Emily on her sums. Perhaps she can inventory our whiskey supplies. Just think. Our future Empress has a bar for a schoolhouse. As you can see, Lady Emily has quite an imagination. Any child would grow a little odd in a place like this. Mr. Corvo, can rats talk? I keep hearing them say my name. When I'm Empress, I'll never have to live in a place like this again. I dreamed the river got higher and higher, and we all climbed up to the top floor of the house into your room, but then the water turned into rats. I never have good dreams here. Do you think there's any treasure buried under here? I dug a hole once, but all I found was old bones. I made a list of all the swear words the Admiral uses, but Calista made me throw it away. Calista talks in her sleep sometimes, but it's hard to tell what she's saying. I wish I had my own room. Do they make you clean your own room? I have to. You did it. And now we've done away with a woman and a noble woman at that. But Boyle was a viper. She helped the Lord Regent kill the Empress. So I don't feel a thing for her. Personally, I heard you upheld my name in a rather spectacular style and at some risk to yourself. I want to thank you for it. This little item has been helpful to my family over the generations. But I think you'll find more use for it than I ever will. Go on. Take it. You've had a long night, Corvo. But I fear it's not over. Havelock and Martin have already cooked up something more for you. They would like to see you now in Havelock's chambers above the bar. I regret my connections haven't been more used to you. When this business is over, though, then you'll see what I'm worth. Havelock is attempting to have as many of the Lord Regent's guards reassigned as possible, but he may not succeed. The Lord Regent's paranoia has reached unreasonable levels. I miss Morgan a little. Custis? Maybe not so much. Parliament's been paralyzed for weeks, just the way we need. Lady Boyle's party was nothing compared to what I have planned at Pendleton Manor.
Corvo, the time has come. Everything we have done, everything that you have done, has served to make this moment possible. The Lord Regent is exposed, Corvo. Vulnerable. And now everything is in place to strike at him. We're one step from the throne. One man, one beating heart, is all that's left of the forces that brought this city to the brink of ruin. It is simple, but it will be far from easy. The Lord Regent's paranoia has reached an all-time high. He has lost the support of the Overseers, the Parliament, his financial base, and he's lost Sokolov, who made his security technology. So at Dunwall Tower, he has consolidated every remaining loyal man around him. He knows something is coming. He knows you are coming. And everything depends on him being correct. Piero will help you prepare. Then Samuel will take you close to the tower, near the waterlock. Last time you were there was the horrible day that all of this started. Now you will go there and end it. Good luck, Corvo. I'm not sure what else we could say, other than our hopes are riding on you. The plague has all but stopped shipping, except for a few whaleboats. Miserable conditions right now, I'd imagine. If the crews of whaling ships continue getting infected, we may run low on whale oil. And without that, we will enter a very dark age. There is word that raiders on the outskirts of the city have become more and more brazen in their raids. Gangs inside, raiders outside. What a world. Damn this old war wound in my hip. Son of a gun, it aches these days. Blood's been flowing in the streets. The storm drains are running red. No point in holding back now, huh? The Abbey has suspended funeral services. There were simply too many of them to conduct any other business. As of late, I have treated every sunset as if it were our last. The stench from the river is reaching farther and farther into the city every day. More and more corpses. Do you ever feel that the ghosts of the past are following you? Sometimes I feel them. Hello, love. I once snuck into a party at the Brimsleys. Very strange it was, too. Had a fun night out, did you? I bet you enjoyed yourself over there. I do like a masked ball. So mysterious. No one likes a party better than I do. That is not the vintage I asked for, you half-wit ox. No matter, just set it down. Leave both bottles and get out. I'm trying to write my memoirs. you will. And advisors. So many advisors your head will spin. She wants a cake maker. Well, I tell her you'll have a whole kitchen staff with an army of chefs. And of course she asks if she can have cake every, every day. And I say, if that is your wish, my young empress, which always makes her giggle. Sometimes she gets so sad remembering these things. They remind her of a poor mother. It's been six months, and Emily is resilient, but sometimes I can hear her crying when she thinks I'm asleep.
ready to face the Lord Regent? About time we took care of my say. Long past time. This is it, Corvo. The last memories of Dunwall Tower might not be good ones, huh? So maybe you can make up for what happened back then. It'll be a bit of a climb from the water lot. The most important thing is killing the Lord Regent. He built himself quite a place at the top of the tower. He calls it his safe room or something. Crazy if you ask me. Another point of interest while I'm giving you the grand tour, Corvo. Broadcast control station here where all them announcements come from might be worth looking into. You ready? Next time I see you, the Lord Regent will be dead. And if not, well, it was an honor to serve with you. You know what you're doing, I'm sure of that. But you might consider trying not to set off any alarms. If you do, you can bet the Lord Regent will retreat up to the rooftop. Say he's got some kind of bunker up there. Watch yourself here, Corvo. The Lord Regent loves his newfangled technology. Word is, he had one of those watchtowers put up in the front courtyard. There's a moat out in front of the tower. If you're quick enough, you might be able to use it to get inside. Watch it, though. A friend of mine used to be a gardener here, and the moats are full of very hungry hagfish. If the plague were to take the entire city, or flames consume it, Dunwall Tower would be the last to fall. The Lord Regent resides here, as do those who await their turn with the Executioner. Though the requirements differ, he walks the floor, careful to touch each stone only once, counting. He cannot purge his mind of the thoughts. Dunwall Tower is not so tall that it can rise above the stench of death. We have both been here before. breakfast though no the lord regent conducts all his business and takes all his meals in his safe room he eats way up there on the roof don't he get dizzy stomach he doesn't eat while looking over the edge dimwit though he has been known to take in the view now and again oh sure i get you i've taken the view in once in a while myself when no one's looking who don't what Attention Dunwall Tower personnel. All new assignments report directly to the duty officer. Find you. Whoever you are, then I'll demonstrate. Tower 
personnel. Remain on post until you receive further orders. Don't you love the view from here? This place makes me sad. Why is that? This is where the Empress was killed by that wretched murderer. Everything changed for the worse after that day. It was a dark day for sure, but things were already bad with the plague. In any case, I wouldn't dwell on it. Let me comfort you. I need to get back to work. Can I come by and see you later? I don't think it's a good idea tonight.
says, him and his big moat. What's he? You. You're the assassin they've been talking about. Listen, I don't like these people either. I beg you, just let me live so I can see my children again. Every day I work here is another day I risk offending that tyrant and getting thrown into Coldridge prison. Listen, I can help you. Just use that valve to open the moat overflow. You can get access to the tower's main doors from there. Oh, watch out for the hagfish. I've seen him take a finger off. Good luck, my friend. General. There are no reports of any disturbances, Lord Regent. I don't care. Double the guards anyway. Triple them. Sure, everyone is doing what needs to be done. Yes, Lord Regent. Since the rooftop is secure, you should stay in the safe room for now. My men and I will ensure no one gets up to you. Yes, you do that, General. I'm heading up. Keep this area secure and use that alarm if there's any sign of trouble. Yes, sir. No! You! I knew you'd come for me, assassin. But you wasted the trip. My men are disciplined, and Dunwall Tower is the most fortified structure in the city. Guardsmen are on their way to intercept you now, so run or fight! But either way, you won't leave this place alive! <laughs> Corbo! You! You're the masked villain we've been searching for! You! Well, it doesn't matter! I can't believe you came back here. Tonight, we can tie up loose ends. This time, Corvo, you'll face your execution instead of slipping away. I'll see to it myself. Oh, what did the Empress see in you? This train needs to go to the torture. Mm. I mean, the royal interrogator. Oh no, why do I have to take it? He's harmless, unless you're scheduled for execution or for questioning. He's so strange, always working on something he keeps secret. And he has that brute of a dog. Trust me, he's gentle as a lamb. Now, take him his food.
Sir, I've been hearing strange noises from the end of the hallway. It's probably coming from the torturer's rooms. He's a walking freak show. Just stay clear of him. Everyone does. Children inside. What's wrong with him? He's mute. But it's more than that. I heard the overseers were furious because they suspect him of practicing the dark arts. But the regent ordered them to leave him alone for now. Like I said, avoid the area. Don't worry about me, sir. That sounds like a bad combination all around. Within the high walls of your enemy's stronghold. What an impressive sight you make on your way to face the Lord Regent. How will you end his reign? By blood or by truth? He's not an easy man to get close to. If the Empress had been as well guarded, how different things would be now. Is it just revenge you're after, or do you have another plan in mind? Will you restore things? Make it all right again and crown a new empress? Or will you send them all howling into the void? Either way, I expect a good show. mind before it becomes fractious and developed. Can two enemies occupy the same body? No, for the first will direct it one way, and the second will attack into a ditch. Likewise, two contrary thoughts cannot long abide in a man's mind, or he will become weak-willed. <laughs>
that one day you'll be grown up and I wonder what you'll remember of these years will you recall your time as a child with fondness or were there too many caretakers formal dinners and lessons about boring old history maybe the precious hours we spent together will shine brighter time captured now and then with your mother and with Corvo who was always close to my heart I hope the season of rats and plague will be nothing more than a passing shadow on your early memories. A crisis come and passed, weathered by your mother and her advisors. You'll sit on the throne someday, and will do well, I hope. It's a tricky life, full of responsibility and peril. It was not your choice to be the daughter of an empress. But I believe you'll rise to the challenge. Stay good-hearted, Emily. Keep drawing and telling stories. And only share your power with those you truly trust. The citywide ban on whale oil is now in effect. Citizens are encouraged to bring any whale oil in their possession to the city watch at once. Anyone caught burning oil will be subject to arrest. This message is a directive from the Lord Regent himself. We must all trust in the Regent. Please, please don't hurt me. You're here to kill the Regent, aren't you? Spare my life, and I can help you beat him. He makes recordings on audiograph, secrets. Some that would destroy him if others heard. Played on this amplifier, his confessions would be broadcast throughout the city. He'll be ruined. The audiograph card you want is in a safe in the Lord Regent's room. But I was able to see the combination over his shoulder. 935. Trust me, what's recorded on that card will do the trick. Good luck. His chambers can be reached by the balcony. Be careful. 
It's likely he's in his chambers right now. It's over, isn't it? I won't need to make these announcements. My brother has a farm north of here. I think that's where I'll go. assassin we've been tracking across the city he's here everything's secure here for the moment sir we have our best people searching for him stay in the safe room we'll get him Regent. try remaining calm okay i am calm it's imperative everything is locked and secure and in its proper place yes lord Regent. remember your roof fortifications are completely secure even if all else should fail of course they are because i insisted on it very well. Carry on. I want frequent updates, Captain! Thing 
I will find you soon enough. This is him, the Lord Regent. Before that, the Royal Skymaster. And before that still, Hiram Burroughs. What secrets he has. I will find you soon enough. How I misplaced my trust. Now that I see so well, I know how truly blind I was. He is driven by obsession, like a madness. Order. He must have all things in order. It was he who brought the rats. The rats brought the plague. There is no man more cursed. Disease, death, and murder. That is what Hiram Burroughs, the Lord Regent, has brought us. I demand that you show yourself! Is it all done? You ready to go back to the Hound Pits? Thanks to you, Corvo. All right, let's go. Big changes. Makes me uneasy, to tell the truth. A small fry like me always gets the worst of it. But maybe it's going to be different now. The Lord Regent is gone. The Abbey has a new high overseer. I'm guessing our work is almost done. The others are in the bar. No doubt waiting to raise a glass in your name. Me, I think I'll just linger out here if you don't mind. Reflect on things while we have a moment. Congratulations, Corvo. Attention Dunwall citizens, do not attempt to interfere with the regular transfer of infected persons- Still fighting the good fight, I see. Is the Lord Regent dead yet? If he is, then you'll need me even more than before. You think those fools in Dunwall Tower were in charge? My inventions have held this city together for five years. Do you think I care who rules this rat turd of a city? An empress, a lord regent, or the outsider himself? It makes no difference to me. You all pine for your empress. Did you know her at all? I did. Intimately. If you do not release me, my elixir will never be perfected. This city will choke on its own blood.
I know it's a good day, but the rats are still here, aren't they? I look out at the river and still see the bodies going by. I wonder if the Admiral could get me a post in the Navy. I don't need anything fancy. I guess you'll be headed back to the tower soon. Gonna be a little easier this time, I hope. The river was in a temper this morning. Oh, it's got moods, it does. Like my poor wife used to. If you should have any need of me, I'll still be ready to go, Corvo. Just because the Lord Regent is defeated, doesn't mean I'll get lazy. Did you kill anybody tonight? How many? That's it. The Lord Regent's done. Farewell to Hiram Burroughs, you scheming piece of shit. Now we can bend the law to pardon our past crimes, Corbin. We'll find out. The assassin the Lord Regent sent to butcher the Empress. Then you can have your revenge. We'll have to move fast to clean up his mess. The armed forces will do their job. Martin has control of the overseers. And you, Trevor, do whatever it is you do with part. That's Lord Trevor Pendleton to you. Without me, you'll never command the nobility. They'll tear you apart like a fish. Sorry, Corvo. We're nervous. Your work is done, and ours begins. The coronation will be an impromptu affair, but it still requires much preparation. Most of it we can handle, but there is the matter of security. Emily will be vulnerable to whoever killed her mother. I doubt history will repeat itself, but you must be sharp and wary tomorrow. He's right. Rest. Restore yourself. Raid Piero's wares. Restock your ammo and make yourself ready. Just in case. To Corvo, the man who served to change the course of history. To Emily Cole, and the new dawn rising for Dunwall and the Empire. Have you given Emily much spiritual education? The Seven Strictures? You the Litany and the White Cliff? 
I... No. I lack the qualifications, Overseer. Uh, hi, Overseer. Perhaps you ought to send her to me, and soon. She is a spoiled child, even if she's to be an empress. The Abbey is corrupt, but as long as it stays that way, I can control it. Campbell's journal was a gift. The outsider walks among us today. I can almost feel him. The chaos we've caused is a double-edged sword. I think we'll need the City Watch strengthened. Righteous and pure, I do every man's work. I can't hold back. I can control the Abbey. I just don't know if I can heal it. We'll have to keep the overseers on the street maintaining order. These are faithless days. We do all this work, all this risk, so that a child can assume leadership of an empire in chaos. I give us very slim odds. All of us. I'll need the Abbey's blessing if I'm to marry her. I wonder if Martin can arrange it. One thing I'll say for the Regent, he kept the commoners out of our business. Will you be resuming your old post as Lord Protector? We'll need one. Things are very bad out there. Oh, the scores I'll sell. Pritchett, Pennyworth, out on their asses. Emily will revoke the warrant on you tomorrow. Until then, legally there's still a fairly lavish reward, so I'd keep your head down and your mask on, if I were you. Dunwall is just the beginning. When the Navy's rebuilt, that's when the fun starts. Eat well tonight, Corvo. Once we install Emily, the work will begin of hunting the Lord Regent's ring of skulking spies and killers. The other day I saw Emily staring at you. Do you think she understands what you've done? The Pendletons? Lady Boyle? I think on some level she knows what's been done in her name. I suppose I should thank you. I just don't like to think of how you did this. I hope I'll sleep better in Dunwall Tower. Fewer nightmares about that, perhaps. I won't be sorry to leave this place. Neither will Emily. Do you think the others resent her fondness for you? I've told her an Empress is always merciful. She says Empresses are supposed to be ruthless. I'm tired of being afraid. When I'm Empress, I'm going to make everyone else afraid instead. Just like you do, Corvo. When I'm Empress, I want to build two giant ships and crash them into each other, and all the men will drown. I'm allowed to do that, right? I don't know if I like this, Corvo. Everybody's arguing. Sometimes when you come home, you smell like blood. My great-great-grandfather conquered the Isle, but then he got poisoned. Calissa told me. If someone killed the Lord Regent and someone killed the Empress before that, how do I stop them from killing me? What will you do now that the revolution's come, Mr. Corvo? I hope you have a good plan. I know I do. I wouldn't mind seeing Lydia go. All it takes is a hint of plague. Every week, there are more rats than before. The others will set themselves up nice. Lords and all. I'll still be here. Well, just, just, just. Nothing changes for Cecilia. It gets colder and colder in here each night, and we have no more blankets. Hello, Corvo. The Pendletons owe you a debt. So many dead. At least they were mostly commoners. When we move, I will not be taking any furnishings back with us. It's all contaminated by this place. At last, an empress on the throne again. Will it seduce her into becoming a despot? I half expect it. You are an impressive man, Corvo. I hope they give you the credit you deserve. The servants get blamed for everything that goes wrong, but we aren't in charge. How does that make sense? I used to enjoy company, but now you can never tell who's sick and who's not. But most are sick, so I stay alone. I had a nest egg saved up, buried outside in a glass jar, 
but this morning I discovered that rats ate through the lid and it all washed away in the mud. Do you need me to put something together for you? Samuel, you move like you've been drinking. Did the poison work its magic? Is he dead? It better have worked. It cost me a month's profit. Yes, sir. I believe Corvo has breathed his last. Just as you wanted. You've done a fine job. Remember, we need the body. If we come forward with the corpse of the man who murdered the Empress, we'll be greeted as heroes. Yes, it'll grant us legitimacy. We'll be the men who rescued Emily and brought down the Lord Regent, and his assassin. You'll see to the body, won't you, Samuel? Yes, sir. Why I keep sticking my neck out for you eludes me. But I only gave you half the poison, Corvo. They were watching me do it, but not close enough. Maybe you'll survive it. I can hardly blame them for turning on you, after all the people slaughtered in the name of this cause. Those are crimes of state, and maybe they figure it'd be too hard to control Emily with you around. Could be they're right on that score. I'll drop you in a boat, and then I've got to ship out myself before they smother me in my sleep. That's the next thing. Makes the most sense. If you're lucky, you'll wake up and find your way out of this doomed city. If not, well, goodbye. This is the one who was with the Empress when she died. Poison. Tivian stuff. Amateur work. He'll live. That's up to Dowd. to you when you visit his shrines. I visited those shrines too. And I know what it felt like to shove a blade into your empress. But I don't know you, who you are, and who you fight for. You're a mystery, and I can't allow that. Here you are at last, 
in a ruined and drowning world, held captive by the man who killed your empress, the assassin Dowd. Your friends poisoned you and dumped your body in the river. Did they do it to protect themselves, so no one would ever know what they'd done? Or was it because they were a single move away from controlling an empire, and they knew you'd never let them manipulate Emily? Maybe none of these. Perhaps that's just the nature of man.
Jesus.
Why would you come back here? Hard to say, but we should watch the streets. We'll see him from the rooftops. All right. If nothing else, we can cut him off at the market. He can't get through the rail station without the key. This one is resourceful. He'll find a way.
Understand. Corvo's weaponry is of great quality. If Dowd will not use it himself, why don't we simply cast lots for it? What I do not understand is why you are voicing your complaints to me and not to Dowd himself. I have a job tonight. What's the delay? I am gatebound, not riverbound. And Dowd holds the key to the tunnel and is asked not to be disturbed. Is that it? Correct. This prisoner we took, the bodyguard who was with the Empress, seems to trouble him gravely. Yes. I feel that we've reached a turning point tonight. Yes. Good luck on your assignment when you are permitted to leave. move unseen. Stay in shadow and avoid the light. Cross to the other side of the room without attracting notice.
Very good. I did not see you approach. Now, attempt a transversal. Do not focus on your destination with your eyes. That is folly and will limit the potential of the power. You know the layout of the room. Instead, focus on where you wish to be standing, and it will be so. Excellent. We have no more to teach you for now. Return to your place of rest. Your real work with us begins tomorrow night. in the streets around the Greaves Refinery are dead. He butchered them and moved on. He's probably close to our location right now. Keep the rest of the men in place. I didn't expect this. But all we can do is remain vigilant. Ultimately, he will come to me. So he's dead. Farewell, Lord Regent. Royal Spymaster. Hiram Burroughs. You small, worried man. You'll never know how many times I've thought about trying to get close to you again. Just to put a piece of sharp metal in your eye. But someone beat me to it. Someone very dangerous, it seems. Good riddance to you, sir. So many schemes you had, and so many contracts. How many people did I kill for you? None like the last. None like her. I'd give back all the coin if I could. No one should have to kill an empress.
see anything. I must be be in a basement. There's no hospital. I told you that. You think they round people up because there's a cure? They're city guards. <coughs> They're <coughs> supposed to, to protect people. Ah! They did. They protect the healthy people from people like us, the sick ones. I'm not uh, that bad. Some people pull through, right? <coughs> Don't they? One in a thousand. Ten thousand, probably. Any chance, I'll take. What when I get out of there <coughs> and get better, I'm going to do right this time. A fresh start. This time. Uh, Goodbye, my boy. Strange. You don't look ill. You're not a victim, not a guard. A spirit from the void, maybe. Another wagon comes every few minutes. How many do you think have died? They say a third of the city. I wouldn't have believed it, but I saw the mound of corpses myself. They dropped us in it. I don't blame them. I know why they do it. But I only wanted to die at home. Some new kind of guard? Like a tall boy? Can't be. Doctor, maybe? Uh, just kidding. Assassin, maybe. Passing through, huh? Hoping to catch a ride on the plague wagon. A few come through here trying. And they fall and break their necks. But that won't stop you. You're almost there. It's pretty easy to get to the rooftops from here. You'll see the way. What do you want from me? To rob me? Looking for a quick roll in the mud? To rescue me? Well, I am not going anywhere. I came here all on my own, and I'm staying right here. Do you think it's better out there? I hate to break it to you, but this is it. This is Dunwall. What you see right here. Flooded district, estate district, anywhere else. It's all gonna be the same soon. Don't you have a plague wagon to catch? top of it and right out of here. Okay, great, smart guy. And what do we do when we hit the wall of light on what short gate? We'll be fried. So what you about to do? I don't hear you with any better ideas. That's because you've got fat in your ear. Those tall boys are just waiting for a chance to cut loose. We get power to their lights, 
and they'll go off to hunt Plager. We can slip right past. To kill what, a dozen people? I didn't get into this to kill people. If only you knew how to tie off a boat. We need to make up our mind. That guy in the mask I saw? He came up from the Dry Canal. That's whaler territory. They're bad news. Okay, okay. We'd better make sure the coast is clear before we pack up. Don't want to get caught with our pants down. I don't care if I'm wearing pants or not. As long as I get out of here. I see you've got the barrier up. About time. Would have been done sooner if live buggers didn't keep climbing back out. How many times have I asked that only cadavers take the long drop? Nothing ever changes. You should know that. Some guy in the last shift was telling me the Lord Regent himself was stuck like a pig on some assassin's blade. What is going on up there? Beautiful. The way you express yourself. Now shut up about it. I'm told there might still be play carriers running around down here. They poke their heads out sometimes, but I've had my hands so full with these diseased bastards coming out of the canal, I truly can't be bothered. Well, the tall boys have orders to burn them out. If a weeper gets out, then we've got the same problem a hundred times over. This is exactly why those jackasses who run the plague wagon need to gut the bodies before they throw them in here. Well, when we get the lights back on, it'll be easier. We've got more tanks of whale oil on their way. Finally. The last thing I need to do is crawl around looking for them. Right. I'm headed back to civilization, or what's left of it. Have fun in here. Oh, you bet. Because the tall boys are such great conversationalists.
Wish I had a last swig of whiskey. You're the masked guy's been taking down all the lords and ladies. No way through this gate unless you've got the sewer key. Only one place to get that key, and I wouldn't go there. Not for all the gold in Dunwall Tower. Not again. Maybe you could pull it off, though. Something attacked us in the distillery. It used the rats. I know it sounds crazy. And then it run back under the streets. So we come down here to kill it, Slackjaw leading the way. Went bad. I barely crawled out. Don't know what happened to Slackjaw. He had the sewer key, though. It was a fog. And then rats. Rats everywhere. Slackjaw chased him deeper into the sewers. Like a nightmare, something came up and started attacking. Slackjaw's still in there. If he can kill it, I don't know. City Watch bastards hiding behind their walls. nasty fat and sinew, and carve a pretty song on your bones. Hey! Someone kill this crazy witch! I could make you rich! Quiet now. Granny needs to concentrate. Don't kill me. Granny Rag, stop. Stop what you're doing. Can't we at least talk about it? My knives gotta be nice and sharp to cut into your skeleton, Slackjaw. Nice and sharp. There's my love. Are you ready to help get Slackjaw's bones? Granny has some birthday gifts for you. I've been saving them up in case you ever came back to me. Not going to help Granny? Well, I'm disappointed. You better leave. Bastard. You're down here too? <laughs> the least you could do is help me out. You swindled me good, masked man. 
And all along, you were the same bastard who killed the Empress. Oh yeah, Corvo. Word is all over the street. But it's supposed to be her, when she was young. That's where she gets her powers. Throw it into the furnace, burn the cameo, and you kill her. Unlock me. Wanna know something funny? When we were kids, we were all scared of Granny Rags. Thought she was a terrible witch. Then we grew up, and figured she was just a sad old lady. We were right the first time. Now ain't that funny? I owe you. This won't even the score, but it's all I got left. Luck to you, Corvo. way into such interesting places, Corvo. At the eye of the storm, raging between granny rags and this man who has lived his whole life with a cleaver in one hand and a bottle in the other, crawling out of those flooded ruins, winding your way back to the pub where you last saw Emily. Where is she now? How does it feel now, knowing your allies betrayed you? Strange how there's always a little more innocence left to lose. And Dowd, you just killed the greatest assassin of the age. Did you do it for love of the Empress or Emily? Or was it the primal desire to rise above other men? Do you even know why?
Please, no! Oh, it's you, Corvo. I think the stars. We all thought you'd been killed. Except for Samuel. He seemed sure you'd survived. I saw him on the river shortly before the killing began. He was smart enough not to come ashore. But I'll bet he's still out there. Looking for you is my guess. Havelock called us into the yard. But I wasn't feeling well. I just watched from the attic. The Admiral brought his cutlass. He stuck Wallace through the eye with it. Then he did Lydia. Calissa he shot in the back with his pistol. Emily saw it all. Havelock kept yelling something about the things he'd done and how no one could ever know. Pendleton wouldn't even look anyone in the face. They said it was time for Sokolov and went off to his cage. I don't know what happened after that. Emily was there when the killing started. Poor child. I hope she hit her eyes. The Admiral said that Martin was right. I guess they talked about it. And they started to worry they'd get executed for all that they'd done, going after the Lord Regent and his allies. I suppose it's why they've poisoned you too. I thought Lydia would squeal on me at the end. She just told Havelock to screw himself. And died. Lydia is the only one who ever showed me any kindness. I don't think the Admiral actually knew I existed. I can hide here for as long as it takes. Seems that no one is safe when a man is that close to a prize like the throne. Gonna be a great party tonight. I was only a kid at the last coronation. You didn't even make it to tonight. Did you look at this mess? Relax. One of the officers said he was dead. Poison thrown in the river. If you ask me, he's long gone. Through the mask in the river, left down. That's what a rational person would do. Not this guy. You have to understand the criminal mind. I hear they had to hide the Caldwell girl from him the whole time they were working with him. I heard they locked him in a cage, and only let him out at night. Criminal mind, huh? So what's he doing now? Waiting. He's probably watching us right now. With that crazy mask on. Even closer, even closer, ever closer, until... Cut it out. What's so impressive about Corvo, anyway? Who's he got up against? A couple of high overseers, a couple of noblemen? He could never stand up to men with our training. Well... Now I do hope he shows up. I want to see you run crying for the cover of the tall boys out back. Like you were, the other night. What was I supposed to do, stand there and get hit by rocks? They were just kids. They were a gang. I hope Lord Regent Havelock sends the tall boys in to level the place. It's gonna be a new era. Having a ten-year-old on the throne isn't gonna cure the plague. High Overseer Martin says it will. He says we were cursed when the Empress died by Corvo's black magic, and the rats are never gonna leave until we had a real Caldwin back. He says the Outsider follows Corvo around. There's some curse on this city, that's for sure. I'm still trying to forget working in the Flooded District. Don't remind me. Before we go, I'm gonna stash a few bottles of wine from the cellar. Take them out of here with us. Just make sure Corvo's not hiding down there first. Maybe you're right about that guy. Our men are still trying to penetrate the workshop. Close up tight. We think Piero Joplin's inside. That crackpot natural philosopher. There is evidence that Anton Sokolov was held here against his will for some time. We can't determine what happened to him. 
I'll bet my commission he's in that building with Piero Joplin. If so, arrest him. But I don't want him harmed until I get to the bottom of all this. Careful. The place may be booby-trapped, and I want him alive. What else? <coughs> yes, sir. Servants were all executed shortly before we arrived. Looks like a naval cutlass and a small bore pistol. Looks like Corvo ran amok before he left. Turn this building inside out. And it goes without saying, this area is sealed. Still walkers at all points. And stay vigilant. Corvo's the most dangerous man in the Empire now. And he has nowhere else to go. Never thought he'd bother us again. I guess he holds a grudge. Attention, Dunwall citizens. With sad hearts, the City Watch must announce the death of the Lord Regent, Hiram Burroughs. May his spirit fade and become one with the cosmos. Lord Regent, I hereby appoint the Lord Trevor Pendleton to the office of Prime Minister. liking the look of this one bit. That party died down inside awful fast, and now they called all the staff together. They said one more package for me to deliver, but I think I'll be keeping station at a safe distance from the riverbank and keep an eye on things for a while. Before your meeting with Havelock downstairs, I want you to hold this to the boat for me. A 
I'll be recording the most important chapters in the next few days. It's refreshing to converse with someone on my own level. I couldn't agree more. Your expulsion from the Academy was a crime against natural philosophy itself. Which you might have pointed out at the time. But it's pointless to hold a grudge. I want to ask you... About the elixir, yes. And I need to discuss your tonic. Why have you not tried the homeopathic solution? And where am I to find the subjects? I can't recruit from prisons as you do. But it's forced me to work with another agent derived from... The river crusts, yes, I'd guessed as much. But I think our approaches may reinforce each other. This is what we've been lacking thus far. Corvo, good to see that you still breathe. The city would not be the same if you were not with us. I've completed Piero's work on an arc pylon, but only just. With this device, we can send a powerful electrical signal through the nervous system, merely rendering our enemies unconscious, or they can be reduced to ashes. I've attuned it so that we will be safe from the functions of the device. It will only trigger in the presence of our enemies. This arc pylon is more powerful than the older design. It will function at a greater range, striking down our foes while ignoring us. I need my final sequence, which is recorded in the blueprint for this device. Havelock was inspecting it before the killing started. Return the blueprint to me. It was in his bedroom before he left. Hopefully, it's still there. You may navigate the fields of battle with ease, but Sokolov and I are not as gifted in the same way. Without the Arc Pylon, it is only a matter of time before they put an end to us. We can get this device working, or you can go out and remove our enemies one by one, whichever you think is best. All of the guards have been dispatched already? I spend weeks building a machine to do something you can do in a matter of minutes. I thank you for showing me the inefficiency of my process. I expect that you will want to take revenge on those who wronged you. I do not know where they went, but it was by water. Old Samuel would know I'd wager. We once discussed a system of signals to be used in Emily's Tower for communication across the river. I wonder if he remembers that. I'll do what you want, but ask quickly. Goodbye, Corvo. I wish to apologize for what was done to you. It seems that holding all the pieces and standing a step from the throne changed something in the others. Something I don't understand. Don't underestimate Havelock, Corvo. He'll be waiting. Well, Corvo, I hope we can be considered colleagues again. You were condemned, I was kidnapped. Men like us rise above such things. As to the good Admiral, I believe men such as Havelock start with high-minded intentions. Same with Martin, and maybe even Pendleton, though I suspect he was just lazy. But no one is prepared for the sheer seductive influence of being so close to real power. Once you start ordering people killed to get your way, everything else is mere detail. I return to my work now, and you to yours. 
Killing people, I mean. I sincerely hope it goes well. Devastated. The girl I've been caring for is gone. Emily is her name. Yes, that Emily. Daughter to the Empress. She's gone. They took her away in a boat this morning. I don't know where, and her hair hadn't been combed. I worry who will look after her. I didn't even get a chance to say goodbye. I'd find you here. It never pays to bet against you, does it? I saw the signal. I knew you'd be back, Corvo. I knew it. We should start off soon. I've been feeling something in my bones, and if it's plague, well, I can't be counted on to drive this boat much longer. Good. Then it's one more trip across the river to where it meets the sea. That's where the Lord Regent was building his new lighthouse. Ought to be something to see. like they fought, maybe over Emily just after they landed. I'll bet the Admiral's got her locked up in the lighthouse somewhere. If Pendleton's lost the first round, he's probably dug in someplace, doing his best to drink himself to death. I suspect it's Martin's got the lighthouse under siege. They turned on each other at last. So the Admiral's power mad, Martin's a snake, and Lord Pendleton is a coward. And you, Corvo, the things you've done, you could be the worst of us. I've seen a lot traveling with you. Now get off my boat. I'd wish you good luck, but I'd be lying. Out, Corvo. I'll let you go this once. I don't like what you've become. No better than these traitors. That's why I'm going to tell them you're coming. There's nothing here? Are you sure? I know a gunshot. That was definitely a gunshot. Look around.
I was with Pendleton, I'd escape through there. We can't even guard that area. Those rocks are as slippery as chopped up eels. Unless he's as agile as a cat, which I doubt. He's better off hiding where he's at. Why don't you come down and settle this man to man? The view is nice up here. I'm not moving. Don't try to act brave, you worthless piece of inbred shit. Come and get me if you're so strong. Stupid blue blood. Let's see how you like this. Martin, you couldn't hit me if I was standing next to you. <laughs> Now I'll sit for a while and consider the problem of getting into the gatehouse. I need time alone. to add me to your list? To write my name across the ground in blood? I'm not gonna plead innocence. When we dug you out of Cold Ridge Prison, we had the best of intentions. We'd find Emily and strike against the Lord Regent. But once we started ordering deaths, blackmailing those in power, and all the other things you're not supposed to do, well, I guess it just became a habit. It's a hard thing holding the keys to the Empire in your hands. It weighs on a man's mind heavily. Curse Havelock and Pendleton as fools. Curse me as well. I can't stop you from going after Emily. But I'm not going to give you the privilege. I was born into nothing. And it's nothing I'll return to. <laughs> Just stupid bastards. They picked the wrong side of this fight. I can't even tell who's on the right side of this one. Looks pretty clear from where I'm standing. I don't think anyone knows what happened. We saw the little girl, I mean the Empress, go through the gatehouse and into the lighthouse proper. Then we heard the shots. Then we rushed the gatehouse, but it's sealed up. What makes us right and them wrong? I didn't mean wrong, like morally wrong. Who cares about that? I meant like... 
like the cannon we're bringing up has a right end and a wrong end to be on. Out of my kids, but I didn't know. I thought we had already won. I still say his lordship was right to try for the girl. The admiral was just faster. His lordship's landed us right in the shit now. You're right there. Havlik up top, Martin at the gates, and us in the middle. And our man's wounded. Shut your mouths, both of you. We're Pendleton's men. Live or die, we're going to act like it. Don't say that, my lord. First my brothers, now me. It's my own fault. And now Cousin Celia's going to inherit. That's the worst of it. <laughs> Been a decent captain. A little slow on the draw yesterday, I have to say. But decent. Yes, my lord. Sorry, my lord. Corvo, I knew you would get here. <laughs> Too late. I'm already dying without your help. A stray bullet. I'll never know whose. What could I offer you anyway? You want money? Well, I'm broke. Women, maybe? Everyone knows you were screwing the Empress. You like noble women. You should meet my cousin Celia. <laughs> your own squad after what happened last night? Indeed, I believe so.
done such things. Cowardly things that I'm ashamed of. How could anyone ever forgive us? Would they? Even if things are better? No, no, that's not how it works. Once the bureaucrats step in, everything gets muddy. If anyone ever knew, we'd all lose our heads for this. So no one can know. And could we ever control Emily with Corvo around? That's the question that sticks in my mind. We need to make our final move, and we need to make it cleanly. No loose ends. Only a few in the know. The ones with the most to lose. child. Hold still, stupid girl. Let me go! I am the Empress! Didn't you learn anything in your short life? Empresses are pieces on the board, and an Empress can sometimes die. Everything has come to nothing. The plague will take us all. You could have sat on the throne with me behind it. But now Corvo is racing toward us, ready to dash it all to bits. Corvo's going to kill you! Ha! Possibly. Corvo's killed a lot of people, but he's terrible at saving empresses. He's the worst of us all, you know. No! He loves me and he is my friend, and I am the Empress! Ah! Ugh. A little dignity, please. I think we'll go now, you and me, into the history books together. Say goodbye, Emily the First. This world is no place for little girls. I always knew you would come. You're my hero. The others are all dead, aren't they? That's all right, because I was going to have them killed anyway. I am going to be Empress. What will history tell us? That the daughter of a murdered empress ascended the throne up a mountain of corpses, carried by an assassin named Corvo? No. They'll say that little Emily Caldwin I came to power in an age of terror and corruption, and that she did her best in a world that is not kind to little girls or empresses. Whether the stories told mention you by name or not, she will remember you were there, Corvo. Yeah. 
Well, we shall not stumble, no, we shall not fall. We shall not crumble, no, we shall stand tall. Well, death it will come, as sure as the night. But we will not run, no, we live but to fight. Oh, with blood on our hands and dirt on our knees. We'll tear after once, we brought the disease. 